pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we'll move on to item 3.3, .3, our superintendent comments. Well, good evening, everyone. So out there, um, if you do not know, today is Administrative Assistance Day. So all of us that have administrative assistance, we hopefully know that. I decided to, don't walk away, Eva. I decided to do this um, publicly um, because one, it was on the exact day of our board meeting, but then also, um, my executive assistant, Eva Rentaria, not only works really long hours to keep up with me and to um, support me, but she also does all the work for the board as well. And so I thought that they would want to also say thank you to her. So we have um, flowers, cheesecake, because she's, she's a cheesecake fan, and a little um, gift card for her to th say thank you. So if we can all thank her and thank all the administrative assistants. And then just um, two pieces of really great news. So as we're going, um, as some of our partners who are here know, um, we've done a really um, great job originally under the support of Sue Galti and now under the support of Stephanie Monroe of really focusing on our commitment to provide music instruction to every single child in the school district. And so for the second year in a row, we received the 2023 Best Communities for Music Education Award by the NAM Foundation. And so I'm really proud of that because four years ago we said we're going to have a commitment that every single elementary child will have 45 minutes worth of music instruction every week and we have accomplished that goal. Um, and so really excited about that. And then in the next two weeks, we are going to have, and we're going to see the resolutions coming forward, but we're going to have um, Day of the Teacher and also um, the Classified Week coming up. And so each year we try to think of something that would be meaningful to people that people would want to use. And so this year I'm actually really excited about it because we decided to do a, um, a reusable bag that has our logos on it. And then every single school and department is also recognized here because it, um, it truly takes all of us to be able to move this forward. So our staff will receive these next week and um, some community members are also gonna be able to receive them as we're out in the, um, in the Centro and the other areas that we're out. So thank you everybody and have a great rest of the evening. All right, thank you. Um, we will move on to item 3.4, our governing board comments. Um, so this is an opportunity for each of our board members to make a few comments. And we'll start with Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. Um, welcome everyone tonight um, to the board meeting. We're uh, excited and looking forward to hearing your comments. I attended the DLAC uh, meeting, when was that? Last week or the weekend, week before, and, and met with uh, multiple people there. It's a wonderful, wonderful meeting um, supporting our English language learners for the district. Upcoming, we have our um, Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance meeting. Friday night, uh, Jen Holm and I will be attending the Aptos Sports Foundation dinner. Um, we are so thankful to our partners in the community which support our sports at Aptos High and surrounding schools. And anyway, I think that's about it. Thank you. Tisoto? Good 
good evening, everybody. Thanks for uh, attending tonight's meeting. Uh, I had a chance to visit Pajaro Middle a few weeks back and to see some of the damage that was incurred because of the uh, flooding. Um, it was a pretty sad, sad sight. Um, and hopefully that uh, once we pass that resolution to get things going uh, fast, that uh, cleanup and repairs can happen quickly. Um, so once again, thank you. Trustee Scow. All right, this is, this is working. Uh, great to see everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight. Um, a couple of thoughts. Uh, yeah, thanks to all of our team who have been working on the Pajaro situation. It's a very grinding and frustrating situation. A few of us uh, and the mayor and uh, Supervisor Glenn Church have asked for more federal assistance because the FEMA process is slow and it's hard, especially for many of our uh, families, some of whom are undocumented. And uh, I've actually had friends who are lawyers who used to sue FEMA for not paying people for after disasters. And I can imagine how hard it is for families uh, in Pajaro, many of whom will attend our schools all throughout the district. And so um, money is coming, but it's a slow grinding halt. And just thanks to everybody for their advocacy. More is needed. And shout out to all those teachers, administrators who are helping with fundraisers for their families at our schools. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, hopefully it'll get better sooner rather than later. Um, also, I was uh, part of a presentation last night at Watsonville City Council about pesticides around our cities and our schools. Uh, it's very concerning that uh, cancer-causing pesticides are used around our schools and our city to this day, including right here next door to our district office. Um, and so the Campaign for Organic and Regenerative Agriculture made a presentation. It was very well received by our city council. At some point, I'd like to ask uh, our board to, to hear a present report about that as well, because I think there's momentum to, uh, to make some positive changes there. I'm really looking forward to the agenda tonight. Thank you very much. Trustee Flores. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming out tonight. Um, I was able to attend our green team um, committee, and we had a really great uh, presentation from Watsonville Wetlands. And they were discussing um, the schoolyard greening and how they plan to print, plant lots of trees and just really make our campuses beautiful. So that was really nice to hear. Um, also, I was asked if, we, if I could remind everyone about our balloon ban. Graduation's coming up. And, you know, there's other ways that we can support our students and our grads. Um, we'd like to suggest uh, reusable, recyclable lays. Um, whatever money you're going to put towards those balloons, I'm sure they'd rather wear it around their neck and use it wherever they're going off to college. So please um, stay away from the plastic balloons. And if we could also maybe add something to our website to remind parents um, about our balloon band. And unfortunately, I, was, I had a conflict of conflicting meetings and I wasn't, I attended the last few minutes of my SELPA meeting, my CAC meeting, so I don't have a lot to report on that one. I'm sorry. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you so much for coming out. Trustee Acosta. Uh, thank you. Um, good evening. Welcome, everyone. Um, I am going to keep it very short and sweet. We do have a very packed agenda and a lot of public speakers this night, so I'm going to yield my time more to that. I just want to say welcome, and I hope all that had spring break and had a very enjoyable spring break, and um, that's it. Thank you. So I uh, attended our Pajaro Valley Education Foundation meeting. Uh, we are very much looking forward to our Innovator of the Year um, award ceremony on May 15th at the Mellow Center. Looking forward to other you know, exciting news about the foundation, which we'll share when we can. And just good things are happening with that. Um, also attended the SELPA uh, CAC meeting. Great discussion about identifying and implementing evidence-based practices to improve outcomes for students on the autism spectrum. And just really important discussions about our um, neurodiverse population. I also attended the Monterey Bay Area ROV competition at Watsonville High School. Um, congratulations to the Aptos Junior High team that placed first overall and for engineering in the scout class. And I want to express my appreciation to all the PVSD personnel that made it possible for Watsonville High to be the host site for the event. You know, and for all those um, who host events like it at other sites in our district, 
you know, there were a lot of events just at, you know, Watsonville High, you know, that day, and not just the ROV competition going on at the school. You know, I saw one of our custodians, like, kind of just making the rounds and going around, like, you know, hitting all the trash bins, making sure that they weren't getting over full and keeping it clean, and, you know, just checking constantly, because there were a lot of people. Um, and I'm sure there was a lot of work happening that I didn't see. And these are all things that really create a welcoming environment. And they're a really important part about bringing our students together in subjects that they're interested in and passionate about. And it really makes a difference beyond the walls of our institution. So for all the work that was seen, all the work that wasn't seen, thank you. And that's it. So um, we'll move on to our high school students uh, board representatives report. And I believe we have um, students from Pajaro Valley High School. Okay, well, we can. Well, we will move on to approval of the agenda. And can I have a motion to approve the agenda, perhaps with an uh, addendum to bring back PVHS if they join us later? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. With that amendment? With the amendment. Great, thank you. Um, do I have a second? I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion carries 601. Um, moving on to item 5.1, can I have uh, approval of the March 22nd, uh, 2023 board meeting minutes? Can I have a motion? I'll so move approval of March 22nd board meeting minutes. All right, I have a first, can I have a second? I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries five, zero, one, one. Um, moving on to item 6.1, public disclosure of a uh, collective bargaining agreement between PVUSD and PVFT. Report will be presented by Clint Rucker, our chief business officer. Thank you, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. So before you, I have our AB 1200 or our public disclosure. This is a requirement through Ed Code that we're required every time we negotiate with a bargaining unit that we do have to bring forward an AB 1200 or what they call a public disclosure for public to be able to see what we negotiated on and the financial impacts it has to the district. For this specific agreement, um, the overall financial impact is about $28.5 million, with about $15.7 million being in this current year. Um, the next year is going to have about 10.3 million. The third year out, um, you'll notice a smaller amount of only around 2.7. That's because that's due to an MOU we're agreeing with uh, PVFT at the time. However, there are reopeners for 24-25. Uh, so that actually will have salary reopeners, and therefore that, fully, um, that won't be fully disclosed at this time, but will be once it's settled. Um, just to give a quick update on the process for AB 1200, we do the review, we show that um, whether we have budgeted the dollars or not, which in this case we have, so everything's budgeted, there's no requested budget revision from the board at this time. And then we send it to the COE, which was done uh, at the beginning of April. Uh, COE typically waits for ratification, so I just want to say thank you to PVFT, they did work quickly to ratify, get us that information to get to the COE. COE was able to get a fully ratified agreement on April 12th, the evening of April 12th, and actually turned around and got us an AB 1200 in about seven days, which is really impressive. They actually have 10 days to do it. Um, they knew that we wanted to get this on this board meeting. So I do want to just say thank you to the COE, their staff, Leanne Reyes, who's their chief business officer. Um, I really appreciate all their hard work in making sure this was done on time for us to be able to make this board meeting. So with that, I will open it up to any questions from the public or the board. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? 
Uh, yes, we do, but I also have to um, pause to ask. Um, I have four speaker cards um, that don't have which item it is to, so I'm going to ask that now in case it's to this. Uh, Filberto Sanchez. Filiberto Sanchez. Uh, Jorge Rojas. Seven point one. Okay, seven. I got it. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry. All of them. What? Oh, the previous one too. Thank you. And then um, I think it's Mariah Robert Roberto. Robert. Sorry. Okay. And um, I have one that just says Connie. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. So we do have a public speaker to this com item, and that would be. Our Chris Webb. Thanks, Han. Good evening. I just want to thank um, the district negotiations team for fruitful, good faith negotiations, and I want to preemptively thank the board for ultimately supporting this agreement. And I'm hoping it's going to be part of a, a start of making PVUSD a genuinely more attractive place for potential candidates. I feel like we have made progress um, as, in terms of compensation. I, I'd also encourage the board to just as we move forward in these coming years with no reopeners, I know there's some areas where there's reopeners, but like for, for other groups, not. And in those years, I hope that this board will um, think about ways outside of compensation that we can make PVUSD a place where people want to work. Um, I think it's it, we can do it by embodying the principles that, that we have put forth, such as whole child, whole family, whole community. And um, on that front, like one, one idea that we, we might have is um, going back to what we did at the end of distance learning, where if you have some kind of child care emergency and you're able to handle it as a, as a parent and as a student, or I mean as a as a parent, as a teacher, if you can handle both at the same time, for that one day where your emergency situation, allow people to come in with a waiver. Um, we did that before. We could do it again. I'm saying that as somebody who has a couple child care day needs, I'm going to be taking a PN day if I have to. Otherwise, my, my students do did value seeing my kids before, and it was a really positive experience for everyone. And at a school like Renaissance, um, it's really good for them to see a male come in and do that. That's why it's better than like the whole Watsonville High thing of send your kid off to people you don't know and people who don't know you. It's, it, it makes a difference. So um, also I would just say we shouldn't look at other districts with, with things like that and say, oh, well, they don't do that. Instead, we should say we do do these extra things, and that's why you, teacher, prospective teacher, should come here instead. Thank you. No other public comments? Any discussion from the board? All right. Thank you so much. Great. All right, we will move on to visitor non-agenda items. Um, item seven, so it's item 7.1, there are public comments. And so this is an opportunity for members of the public to address items that are not on our agenda for this <laughs> evening. And just as a reminder for maybe folks who haven't been here before, um, that the, although the Brown Act prohibits us from engaging in discussion for non-agendized items, that we are listening. So do we have any public comments? Yes, we do. Uh, we have a few. Um, I'll call you all by three, and if I mispronounce your name, please do um, feel free to correct me. Bill Beecher, Griselda Sanchez, and Isaac Sanchez. Bill, before we get started. I see a lot of um, people in the audience who might actually benefit from translation. Um, I know them personally, so I'm wondering if we can announce again about um, we have translation service available. So, um, yeah. So, just ag again, you know, tenemos traducción en español. Si necesita um, este servicio, por favor, uh, pase con Orania López.
Um, I'm here to suggest that we add an agenda item in the future. And uh, because we've got a bunch of new trustees on the board, they don't understand what happened with increasing our academic performance. And so I think uh, the district should put do a presentation to talk about collaborative classrooms and Google classrooms. Um, our academic performance over the last seven years has gone from being 12th percentile to 50 percentile. That's fantastic in a short time. To But for me, an even a, a smaller segment, but even more important, was that special needs and English language learners had languished at three percentile meeting or exceeding the standard. That went to 30 to 35 percent. That was huge. That didn't happen in this state. <laughs> so why do this kind of presentation? Um, I think moving forward, uh, We've got teacher shortages. That's going to put a pressure on us. How do you teach in the future? And I think that the collaborative classroom and the Google classrooms and the experience that we've had both during COVID-19 and prior to that uh, are going to be needed to make up those differences of how do we teach in the future. Thank you. Hello, I am Isaac Sanchez, student of the year from the Virtual Academy Elementary School. I like my school and now you are closing it. You have made it difficult for families like my family to find schools that work well for them. Please reconsider to keep Virtual Academy open. Thank you and good night. Good evening, my name is Griselda Sanchez and I'm the proud parent of Isaac and Lila. What's your name? Hi, my name is Lila. Where do you go to school? Um, Virtual Academy. Virtual Academy. And what do you want to tell the board? Mm -hmm. Keep your school open? Yes. Yeah. So Virtual Academy has been a great option for us. Um, it's been the best choice for our family and for other families who are also there. Um, this is the second time I stand here before you asking you to reconsider to please really seek the options to be able to keep the school open for our family as well as for other families um, in the future. And um, yeah, please reconsider and look at the options. Um, this is a wonderful school. It is not like when um, distance learning was happening. Kids have at the school have a curriculum to follow. They have daily rigorous classes and multiple subjects and they are learning and they're excelling wonderfully. I uh, really wish you would reconsider and keep the school open. Thank you. And our next three is Luis Sanchez, Camilla Schaefer, and Kristen Brebakes. Good afternoon, board. My name is Luis Sanchez. I'm here to support uh, Virtual Academy. Um, choices. We all have choices. We as proud Americans are privileged to have choices. The choice that we chose was Virtual Academy. Why? Because it worked for my family. It works for my daughter and it works for my son. My daughter was born at five months old. She's a preemie, she was born at Stanford. She was a tiny little thing. Doctor said that she was not gonna make it. Five, two years later, she came home. 
my daughter is a fighter and right now she's fighting for her school so i asked the board to reconsider not just for us but for other families that are going through the same thing thank you Hello, I'm Camilla Schaefer. I'm the art teacher at Ann Soldo and have been for the past six years. I'm here to talk about my concerns about uh, visual arts education in this district moving forward. The district has made a conscious decision to cut the visual arts in elementary school and place the responsibility of a visual arts education on the classroom teachers. This decision goes directly against Prop 28, which was overwhelmingly passed in November, providing funds to schools to hire arts teachers. It also goes against our own LCAP, which in goal three says that TK through 12 students will have access to arts as part of our commitment to the whole child learning. In most recent Dr. Rodriguez question and answer, she said that access to the arts through credentialed music teachers and access to visual arts through classroom teachers. By hiring credentialed music teachers, we are providing a high quality music education, but we're not doing the same for visual arts anymore. I know this is a money issue. I know that we have funds and a grant through the Save the Music program, and it puts a lot of uh, restrictions on how music is taught. But cutting and removing access to visual arts for the elementary students is not the answer. When I started at PBUSD, uh, we were known across the state as being the district bringing back the arts. Currently at Ann Soldo, students only receive art from kindergarten to second grade. They don't have access to a visual arts teacher again until high school. There is not a visual arts teacher in their middle school. That's unacceptable in my eyes. We are not teaching the whole child. I'm asking the board and the rest of the community to watch out because the arts are being cut again when we should be bringing it back and I'm very concerned. I actually need to switch my comment to 9.8 if that's okay, instead of seven, I'm sorry. I entered it incorrectly. Kristen. Yep, thank you. Our next three, it's um, David, I think it's Mar Mariner, Manier, sorry, and Gail Wallace and Bridget Felder. Good evening, President Holm, members of the board, Dr. Rodriguez and cabinet. My name is David Manier and I'm the assessment coordinator and advising teacher for Virtual Academy. I'm here to advocate for the elementary students and families um, of Virtual Academy. I'm grateful for the last three years that Virtual Academy families have had the opportunity and I'd like to thank the board and the cabinet for their support. Um, however, I'm here tonight to urge you to reconsider the decision to close the K-6 program Although a staff reduction may be necessary due to costs, closing the uh, program ent entirely would be unfair to our students and families. PVUSD owes it to our students and families to provide at least one independent study option that's outside of PCCS. PCCS is oftentimes two capacity waiting list, um, and unlike Virtual Academy, our um, PCS's curriculum is not um, structured, self-guided, and online so that families could truly become their child's first teacher. Our families have chosen independent study for various reasons, including their child might be an advanced learner, have learning differences, students might have mental health issues, including anxiety or depression that may make classroom um, a difficulty for them. Or some of our students may be immunocompromised or unvaccinated. Every family wants to be more involved in their child's education and Virtual Academy provides that opportunity for the families to be their child's first teacher while receiving 
comprehensive individualized support from a credentialed teacher. Virtual Academy aligns with PVUSD's LPAC goals, especially in terms of parent and family engagement, which is an essential part of our program. And moreover, Virtual Academy does not require the traditional expenditures of a brick and mortar site such as maintenance, custodial staff, a school nurse, or utilities. I implore you to reconsider the decision to close Virtual Academy's K-6 program. As a district that cares about our students who have... That was your time. Thank you. I understand, but our that, no, motto is two PBUSD cares. I, I implore understand. you to and reconsider your Everyone gets two decision. minutes. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez and board. Thank you for letting me speak again about the Virtual Academy. I am also a teacher there, and some of my students are here this evening. We want to thank you for thinking outside of the box in 2020, developing a format for families and students who needed to stay home for s the reasons that Mr. Munier spoke about. You don't know how many families you have benefited has, have benefited from your decision that year. So we are here tonight to ask you not to completely close the K through eight, but to keep it open as a format for the students who come to PVUSD and their families who either cannot be in a physical classroom or have found that the physical classroom is not the best place for their learning. So I thank you this evening for all the great decisions you've made. I ask you to stay in that mindset and keep VA open. Hi everyone. First I want to say thank you to Dr. Rodriguez for hearing us parents and being willing to negotiate a way for VA to remain open next year. I'm still unsure as to exactly where we stand as there has not been a plan set in stone yet. We do greatly appreciate your willingness to work with us. Since our last meeting, I have found some information that I'm hoping will make a difference in the reconsideration of keeping our school open as is and not separating the K-12 through grades. Because Mr. Rucker and Lisa refused to provide me with the ADA revenue when asked, Carrie Ann Davis, the principal apportionment section of the California Department of Education, provided us with the current ADA amount of $16,603.95 per child. Based off of the budget provided us to us by our CBO, Clint Rucker, via Dr. Rodriguez, the cost of keeping VA running is $1.9 million. Our current enrollment is 170 students. This works out to $2.8 million, which far exceeds the budget costs by $829,095.50 to be exact. If we are discussing only the elementary portion that is scheduled for closure, our children provide the district with $697,365.90, which still exceeds the amount of 500,000 told to us in the meeting with Dr. Rodriguez. Because we have proven to be self-sustaining, we implore you to please reconsider allowing us to remain open as is for the coming school year. If we were to merge with Mar Vista instead, that would mean we would have rising curriculum costs with two different contracts with FlexPoint and Schoology to serve both Mar Vista and Renaissance. As I am still not sure of the outcome of the meeting between Ms. Ponzio and Mr. Platt, I would like to point out that her willingness to meet with the principal who could be taking her position as our new principal shows her good faith and belief in our program and how much she cares about what is best for our children. This is the very reason we do not want to lose her. All of our teachers have taken this position with our families and are incredibly valuable to us. We understand that Mar Vista is a viable option. However, because we have proven that we are self-sustaining, we would really like you to reconsider allowing our school to remain open as is and give us the opportunity to increase enrollment over the next year. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Cameron Felder, Anthony Felder, and Felix Vega. I want to save my school because it's one that I can actually participate in and I have friends that I I get to meet and part to park days and in person I like doing my work the way that I get to at my school I can take my time if I'm stuck or work faster when it's easy and this is this school work is fun and I like that my teacher is that my family is involved 
and teaching with my teacher, and I like that I get to see my teacher on the computer that we have story time on the computer with my stuffy and jammies. This school is fun for me, and I'm glad I get to make friends. My teacher says I'm doing well, and she is proud of me. Please let me be at my school next year. I love my school and my teacher, Ms. Burns, and my principal, Ms. Fonzio. I hope it gets to stay open next year. Hello. Um, so this, I keep hearing about the self-sustaining, like we're not self-sustaining for the VA. Um, we actually found out, um, actually in comparison of other small schools, such as Mar Vista, with the enrollment of approximately like 300 students, we were costing far less money to operate. Um, the brick and mortar schools have overhead costs such as utility staffing, such as school nurse, janitor, aides, librarian, et cetera, that we are not needing for a virtual platform. These costs far outweigh the small budget required for VA. However, we are the school scheduled for closure. Our school aligns perfectly with the 2021-2022 20, LCAP goals as far as that pertains to elementary grade levels. VA meets the goal of ensuring educational needs are met for all students by providing engaging 21st century learning environments. Appropriately credentialed teachers and quality standards align instructional materials through fiscally solvent practices, also to increase the number of K through 12 students performing at or above grade level, which the elementary grades are above goal. We also increase parent and family engagement in children's education through a variety of opportunities that promote greater parent capacity and empowerment by adding opportunities throughout the school district. This is exactly what VA is, and this was taken directly out of the LCAP goals. So again, I'm not sure why VA must close when everything seems up to par when it comes to scores and our kids enjoying themselves and the well-being of our children, basically. And that's it. Please reconsider. <laughs> Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Félix. Hablo mixteco y español. Quiero traducción en inglés, por favor. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Felix, and I speak mixteco and Spanish. I would like to get some um, an interpreter, please. Muchas gracias por darme la oportunidad de expresar este, mi situación con mi hijo. Thank you so much for letting me um, express my situation with my son. Tengo un hijo de 20 años y uno de 16 años jugando fútbol, soccer. I have a 20-year-old son and a 16-year-old son playing soccer. Ha sido muy difícil para mí por el lugar de las prácticas de los juegos. Hemos sido tratado de representar Watsonville como un deporte donde quiera Las Vegas, en Los Ángeles. El, el, el trabajo, lo difícil para nosotros es entrenar los niños, no hay lugar. Esperemos que el distrito nos apoye en esa parte. Um, our, we've been representing our schools or Watsonville all over the place, Las Vegas and many other places. And our issue is we don't have any a place were to practice, so we are hoping the district will support us with that. El punto importante aquí es que el deporte es algo saludable para los niños, lo entretiene y además este les evita caer en pantilla. Tengo mis hijos grandes y estoy contento en esa parte porque están muy bien, saludable y todo está bien con ellos. Gracias. Um, sports is a good thing. It keeps kids healthy. Um, I'm very happy with my children, they're older, and playing a sport, it prevents kids from falling into um, uh, gangs, so I'm very happy with my kids. Por último, muchas gracias. Aquí están los niños presentes pidiendo la oportunidad de ustedes al distrito que los tomen en cuenta, por favor, muchas gracias, que tengan buena tarde. And lastly, thank you so much, my kids are here hoping that they would be uh, taken into consideration. Thank you and good evening.
Our next three speakers, Gerardo, uh, there's, there's no last name, Gerardo, and Filiberto Sanchez and Jorge Rojas. Primero que nada, pues les doy las gracias por la oportunidad que me dan de poder hablar aquí representando a los niños. First of all, I want to thank you all for letting me uh, or giving me the opportunity to talk and represent my kids. Eh, pues primeramente que nada, igual que el señor que habló anteriormente, pues buscamos el apoyo de, del distrito para que los niños puedan entrenar. Um, just as the gentleman mentioned before, we're looking for the support of the district so that we can f uh, have a place for the kids to practice. Eh, soy padre de familia y tengo tres hijos y los tres han estado en el deporte, pero últimamente en este año solo tenemos que ir a jugar a Salinas y no hay espacio aquí. Um, I have three kids and they're all in, uh, practicing sports, but there's no place for them to practice. We have to go all the way to Salinas for that. Y creo que estaría bien que apoyaran esto porque pues el deporte los aparta de que estén tal vez en casa en teléfonos o en el futuro o en otros problemas mayores. And I would appreciate that because um, keeping them in sports, it prevents them from um, spending a lot of time on the phone or maybe in the future falling into or causing any other problems. Este, estamos yendo a Salinas casi ya ahorita cada domingo a jugar y pues si en las escuelas de allá pueden hacer eso, no veo por qué aquí no puedan el, el, las escuelas. Uh, we've been playing every Sunday, most every Sunday in Salinas, and if they're able to play there, we don't, I don't know why we, ki we couldn't do that here. Y la cosa, pues, este, viene un señor que es Jorge, él está representando a la Liga de Monterrey, y él es el que nos está dando la dirección de esto, y pues queremos apoyo para que ellos, los niños puedan jugar aquí. Un domingo aquí y uno allá. Um, we have uh, somebody supporting us. His name is Jorge. He's here. And we just want your support so that the kids are able to play here, maybe one Sunday here and another Sunday over in Monterey. Gracias. Thank you. Okay, good evening, board, superintendent, cabinet. Uh, my name is Jorge, and I'm the person that has been representing the community of Watsonville. I came before you last time. It was on the 22nd of March, and I've been talking to uh, superintendent's office and uh, board members um, trying to make this happen where we could have a field for our kids to be able to practice and play here. This started back in this year in January. Nothing has been happening. I came here. And to no avail, I have not received an appointment to schedule a meeting and discuss this, especially the MOU that was done with the Activities for All. What happened was the Activities for All came into our organization, and we were sending teams over here, and we were not charging them a dime or any cent for them to play because we understand the community here. We wanted to kind of grow the program here. And when the teams found out that they were being charged and, and, and we weren't charging them, they decided to seek my assistance and help represent them. And now that uh, the district uh, f uh, signed an MOU with Activities for All for five years, the fields are not being used. And I tried to speak with the city, and they told me I have to come here and make that change with the district. The MOU says that the Activities for All is supposed to use it every other Sunday. When I talk to the city, they say he booked it every day, and it's not being used. Those kids are no longer his program. Those kids are here. Those are your district kids. They have no place to go. We started a program in Salinas under Monterey County with four teams, 80 players. Now we have 6,500 players, and we're growing. We're doing the same thing here, and what happened in our area, we've uh, been sending players to the earthquakes, going pro. We just uh, launched a partnership with the Monterey Bay Pro Team. Uh, why? Because we have the talent here, and Watsonville, it's a powerhouse. They are a bunch of talented players that go to Vegas, go to LA, and we want, um, 
we want to put Watsonville on the map as before. Before there was a, a program where it was working successful. They had the fields, and now they don't have anything. So I'm accommodating them in Salinas, and it's just uh, unfair that uh, I spoke with the city, I, and I asked them, uh, how can I make this happen? They said, you have to go to the district and change that MOU. And now I got a call from Mr. Camacho. He said, district told me to give you a call. And I go, okay, uh, how can we discuss this and get our kids back on the field? He goes, well, if you want information, go to the city. They got all my information. That wasn't much of a conversation. I go, you know what? I'm going to deal with my own and go to the district and try and find a solution to make this happen. So um, imploring the district, let's meet, let's put agenda this, let's talk about how we could get the kids back on the field, practice, because the city wants to charge $50 an hour for half an hour of practice, which is too expensive. Thank you. Um, Chris Webb, Mariah Roberts, and Connie. Good evening. I would like to express my appreciation for my, my principal and the extended learning um, administration and whoever else helped um, Renaissance have some soccer this school year. Um, no, this it, going forward, like this is the time of year we should be thinking about next year, and the way to really do this right is you have to plan ahead, because at a small school like Renaissance, um, like with this year where there's not really a coach, and it usually takes teachers taking on that that role, and it takes a lot of thought about the master schedule and how you're going to adjust it to put on these sports, and um, in light of some of these comments, I would I would just like to share also that at Renaissance this year while we have soccer. Um, the students are not practicing on our field due to the, the condition of it. That's a choice they made. Um, I still do like PE out there, but it's not this, I'm not quite the same as soccer. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking like the, the field has come up before. Uh, I feel like it's time to properly invest in it to make it the asset that it can be. And then maybe that's our solution for how we can support these other groups here. Um, the other thing I want to express is that since our last meeting, WASC has come to Renaissance, and uh, you know because of the report from 2021, after our program was was meddled with, and, and we didn't do good in that report, they came, and I felt uh, vindicated because of their findings. They basically the things that I quoted from from our 2018 report, those exact metrics are where the the things that our old system was so good at, um, those are some areas that we had some shortcomings. And I'm hoping that leadership would maybe find the humility to acknowledge mistakes and then allow us to move forward together. Um, if we recognize like what we've actually done well before, we can actually fulfill a lot of our goals and it would, it would make uh, more credibility from the district in terms of um, PBIS and restorative practices. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for your service to our children, to our community. My name is Mariah Roberts. I'm the executive director of County Park Friends, and we're just here to sing the praises of PVUSD Extended Learning. That's what we're here to do. Give it up. Okay. So I'm just going to read a letter that we submitted earlier, but I just wanted um, to, to, to speak it. So we're writing to share a statement of support for the essential role that our administrative, sta administrative staff partners at PVUSD Extended Learning serve. Our ability to serve students across Pajara Valley is only possible due to their tireless dedication to the pursuit of a full range of activities and experiences that our students deserve. We witness the long hours, the constant juggling, and the total commitment of these professionals that they bring to their work, and we applaud any efforts to support them. Only through their dedication, commitment, and efforts is our Parks to School Collaborative Enrichment Program possible. Thanks to Extended Learning, we are currently serving 600 Extended Learning students with a full range of benefits and joy that our public parks have to offer. 
We bring active living and exercise, connection to nature, safe spaces to read, rest, and contemplate. Our parks are where we gather, create memories, compete, celebrate, and PVUSD Extended Learning Partners have helped us to heal the divide between public schools and public parks, and we know that this will have a lasting input, impact. We're currently active at come on, okay, six PVUSD elementary schools, and we bring those students out to Pinto Lake County Park. Can I hear it for soccer fields? <laughs> We're working with America Scores, um, our fabulous partner, and we're running weekly soccer clinics at the school sites, along with doing slam poetry power hour classes. Our county park friends staff is hosting uh, nature activities and distributing, oh no, okay, well anyway, I've got my partner here to continue, so thank you. Hi, my name is Connie Gomez, and I am a coordinator for the Scores Bay Area program. Thank you for the introduction, Mariah. Perfect timing. Um, so I'm just here to shine a little bit of light on the work that we've been doing this semester. And uh, I am just so grateful for our extended learning programs, their team. Um, they work so hard. And uh, this opportunity would not have been available without the approval of uh, our program coming in and serving our community. Uh, Scores Bay Area is a program that focuses on bringing uh, soccer and poetry along with service learning to our extended learning programs as a way to teach about community service, teamwork, and also the importance of uh, having an outlet when it comes to creativity and emotions. I brought a couple of poems that were written by students from our community. Uh, I'm gonna keep it anonymous just for their privacy. And um, so one of our students is from Alianza, and here it is. Today my name is tired, like I am every day. I miss every little fun detail because of my tiredness. Today, my name is fake. Like how I always fake my laugh and smile around the people I love. Today, my name is anxiety. Like how I feel anxious every day and how I fidget with my fingers. Today, my name is therapist. Like if I always care, like when I always care for my friends and give them advice, I don't quite take myself. Today, my name is Patience, just how I'm patient with everyone, even though sometimes I feel like I'm not patient with myself. Today and the final name, and today and the final day, my name is Overthink, just like if I worry how people feel about me or if I did anything wrong to them. Uh, so that is just a brief example of what our program does, and it, it's such a beautiful poem. Uh, I'm gonna share a little backstory. We actually read this poem to the rest of the class just so they can comment about it. it. We ended up having a discussion and more students were able to relate to this, just how I know a lot of you can relate to this beautiful poem. And uh, once again, I just wanted to shine some light on this work and thank you all for the opportunity with our extended learning programs. Our next three, Megan Scott, Donna Lefevre, and Veronica Gallagher. Hi. Thank you for the meeting the other day. Um, after reviewing some numbers, we do have some questions, and we would hope that someone can get back to us with a few of them. Um, we got the budget. There's the teacher salary, but somehow... Medicare, FICA, health and welfare, that's all included. So is just wondering if there's a few separate things. We also received um, the school district ADA. So since I don't have anything new to say to you guys, I get to pass out the paperwork. <laughs>
my name is Donna Lefevre. I'm a teacher at Watsonville High School. Um, I'm also a coach at Watsonville High School, and so I really want to stand behind all of these little athletes out here, and um, I hope that we can find every way that we can work with these community teams because the kind of coaching that the kids get access to in these programs, the kind of culture that is developed in these programs where there's high passion for the sport, and the kids are they're taught extreme discipline, but they're loving it. It's like those moments where they are choosing to put their technology down because they want to be a part of this. Like that's the kind of thing we want to build up as much as possible. And I'm so grateful that we also offer these opportunities in these extended learning programs, but we also can't rule out these community teams that are have these really strong coaches and just strong background in the sport. We want to make sure we support those and create spaces for all those kids. Because I know for sure there's one little guy out there that goes to McQuitty, right? Yeah, and he's an, a stud, so he deserves the best coaches out there. Um, the other thing I, I really appreciate, there's extended learning opportunities offered to our kids, and it's great that there's a lot of resources that, have, that are available for that. Um, I wonder how we can make the school day chunk, their, their regular school day classes, have the same kind of resources that get offered to these kids in these extended learning programs. Like, my kids, if they want to participate in sports, extended learning isn't always something that they can jump in on. So the, the school day is where they need to receive all of their help and all of their support. We don't have enough instructional assistance at our school site, um, at Watsonville High School, so we don't have enough push and support that can happen for these kids. Um, also, in my last 20 seconds, I'm going to say, I can't believe that we didn't put any limits on how many times a teacher can sub for next year. That is horrible. We need limits. What are you going to say? We're going to take lose every prep now? That needs to stop. So, thank you. Hi, my name is Veronica Gallagher, and I've been a teacher at H.A. Hyde Elementary for 26 years. Um, as you have been hearing at so many board meetings, our schools are in crisis due to staff shortages. I want to speak today specifically about the lack of substitute teachers in our district. We heard from countless administrators at the last meeting about how they are constantly covering for staff members who are out sick or who are on family emergencies. Uh, you are giving these highly paid administrators raises, yet they spend so much time as substitutes in my school at H.A. Hyde and at many schools. Um, not only that, you force teachers in our district, including my daughter who just spoke, who is also a coach, um, to give up their prep time constantly to cover classes that don't have substitute teachers. The teachers do not have adequate time to prepare for classes already. She was up till midnight doing grades after coaching. And now you are taking their prep time away, forcing them to work even more overtime. So you are paying them a teacher's salary to substitute, but they don't want to substitute. They want to prep for their classes. <coughs> so you are paying administrators and teachers their m these much higher salaries to work as substitutes. That seems financially irresponsible. Why don't you just increase the pay of substitutes? You can only, you only pay s daily substitutes $140 a day. I started as a daily substitute. That's how I got my foot in the door with teaching. I made $65 a day. Um, you know, that's $20 an hour. That's minimum wage for what they do and how much they, we need them at our schools. You need to pay them a professional Thank wage you. they deserve. Our last three speakers are Louis Baraza, Marilyn Garrett, and Barbie Marshall.
education, not radiation. Educación, no radiación. I'm talking about the radiation exposure from Wi-Fi, cell phones, cell towers, antennas, that it's well-documented harm that you are proliferating. Imagine everyone here with their cell phone. If you were smoking, imagine a cigarette instead with all the toxins going in the air. The damage is egregious, and it needs to be removed. I haven't seen a consent form for parents and guardians, which I think you need to have here, because your child cannot consent. Here's what the form might look like. I consent to my child being irradiated by a group 2B possible human carcinogen exposed to a toxin known to cause DNA damage and other biological disruption, such as multiple organ system disturbance, including reproductive impairment, neurological disruption, cardiac compromise, impaired learning ability, hormonal disruption, and the list goes on. You have been provided data over a 20-year period by me since before I retired from the school district in 2000. It's documented. What do you call it when known harm is taking place? You know it. You continue it. Is that in the category of child abuse, criminality, irresponsibility at the least? In the state of uh, Michigan, I have an article from Environmental Health Trust where an elementary school cell tower sparks spawn strong protests. Looks like similar to what's on antennas here. I'm going to leave you with this. Parents are protesting the installation of 5G cell antennas at the Wyando Elementary School. The story has resulted in near daily news coverage. U.S. Congression Congressman Sherry Thonader released a press statement saying that the cell tower on Thank top you, of the that school is unacceptable. Thank it's you. unacceptable here as well. Hello. Good evening, uh, trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. Uh, Bobby Marchassault, I am a parent of three students in the district as well as a teacher. Um, and I was a parent before I was a teacher. We actually really chose PVUSD. We wanted to be here. And so even as a parent, not only as a teacher, I did want to, uh, you've listened, I know, week after week uh, to many teachers come up and express a lot of concern that still remain. I'm sure we'll, you'll still hear from us. Uh, but I did this week want to come and just express uh, some gratitude for uh, the work that's been done on the contract negotiations. Um, I don't know how long I'll be here, so I hope it's okay I threw it in here. Um, but just appreciate uh, the time and energy to put into that. I believe... You know, not all of us have always seen eye to eye. Sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't. But I think we all have the same goal of, of the best for our community. And um, while I, I will admit, I was the one thing that surprised me, I was disappointed that there's, as was mentioned earlier, not uh, a protection for some of those prep periods. I just trust that in the future, since it's not, that we'll make sure that we got subs so that that is something that's taken care of. So I hope we do that moving forward. But uh, beyond that, I just wanted to uh, say thank you. And I know as you go forward tonight, there's a lot of people that I hope we will be taking care of across our district and continuing to just show that we value uh, all of our staff, all of our faculty on our campuses. So uh, thank you. And I just hope for the best throughout the rest of the night. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. All right, so we will move on to our employee organizations. And so now is the time where we hear from our employee organizations, and each will have five minutes. And we'll start with PVFT. Good evening, President Holm, 
Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, I am Roddy Kirkman. I am the Chief Negotiator for PVFT. I'll be speaking on behalf of us for our time tonight. So um, I will speak to our um, TA as, and that item as well, but I have a little bit more time here. So I do just want to make sure I say thank you to Clint and to the COE, as he mentioned in the public hearing. Um, they worked very quickly to get that approved and onto this agenda. It was really important to us since we TA'd right before spring break that we worked with our membership to get it ratified very quickly um, so we could get it in front of you all for your hopeful approval. Um, because we know that that is going to be an enormous step in retaining the educators that we have in our district, um, knowing that they can focus on planning a future here in this community, as well as attracting folks to our district so that we aren't in the situation where we have so many teachers covering during their prep periods. Um, I also want to speak, um, as Bill Beecher mentioned, uh, the collaborative efforts, right? He talked about Google Classrooms and raising those test scores. And one of the things that PVFT has done collaboratively with this district is a curriculum council. And if you have ever been to a curriculum council meeting, you will have heard the teachers ask numerous times if we could, as part of our professional development, have collaborative PD with grade levels across the district or departments similar to job alikes across the district. Because we know as educators who are in front of students and in classrooms every day that learning from each other is one of the best ways that we can support students. Um, we can share successes, we can share challenges, we can share strategies that have worked for us. Um, we're all using that same curriculum, right? And so um, I hope moving forward that we can actually provide those opportunities. I know many years ago when I was in the classroom, we did have those opportunities and it does make an enormous difference to learn from your peers who are also experiencing those same things. And then I also want to just speak to um, something that was brought up by one of our VAPA teachers earlier um, and Dr. Rodriguez also mentioned that in her comment, which is the introduction of Save the Music to every one of our elementary sites in this district. And while we absolutely support um, music and expanding that opportunity for all of our students in the, at the elementary level, I do wanna share with you some of the impacts that that is going to be placing on our teaching staff. So part of the grant of Save the Music, there is a requirement that that music teacher provides 45 minutes of music instruction, and I know you heard Dr. Rodriguez mention that, to every student but I wanna break that down for you a little bit further. So if I was a teacher at a middle school site, I would have about 175 students that I would say were on my caseload, right? That I would be in charge of grading and all of those, and I would receive approximately one hour of prep a day. A Save the Music teacher at an elementary site is in charge of providing that music to every single student at that elementary site. That means between 400 and 550, whatever that population of that elementary site is, they are seeing every one of those students. They also are receiving the elementary amount of prep time, which is less than secondary. So they get approximately 150 minutes a week. Um, and again, I wanna emphasize that we support the access to music for our students and the access to VAPA an expansion of that program. But we want to make that a sustainable program, a sustainable program for the music teacher who is providing that music, as well as for our other VAPIS program teachers, as well as for our science teachers, as well as for our PE teachers. And so I, I hope we can look at ways that we can provide that access, but make it supportable and make it sustainable for our district. Um, and I will have more to say for our TA. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone from CSCA? We have speakers. Oh, Madam thank President. you. Um, we have two speakers, Bill Beecher and Chris Webb. Oh, mine. One. <coughs> Is it my turn? Gu guys, hold on. We have a public speaker for, for the last item. Oh, Sorry. I just, um, I joined Nelly last month at the um, CFT convention at, and the rest of our PVFT delegation. And um, I wanted to share that at, that at that convention, one of the things that we were hearing across the state 
was about extreme behaviors from students and then this um, tendency to like blame the teachers. And then later, a couple weeks later, there was a survey that went out to all the staff and it seemed like a lot of the questions in that survey um, we ha had that as like their ultimate conclusion, like blaming teachers. Um, so I, I was pretty disheartened by that. Um, and also I feel like we're, we're just kind of, like if we want to be serious about supporting students, we can't, we can't do that kind of thing. Um, and I would encourage, I think we could have saved a lot of money because what I heard was that survey cost tens of thousands. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, I feel like we could have saved money just by re reflecting on the feedback that has come through this podium um, from Nellie herself or from different teachers who've come through here. And um, I would encourage everyone to go back to Nellie's uh, March 8th comments and really look at those because there was a couple things there that really stood out to me. One was like this seeming refusal to um, improve systems. And then another was um, there was talk about focus on public image. And, and when we don't live up to our principles or we, there's even that perception, that's very disheartening for teachers. So I just want to encourage everyone, go back to listen to that. That's like some real feedback there. If we listen through what, what the people are coming and saying, we could probably save a lot of money. Thank you. All right. So now for CSCA. Sorry about that. Good evening, Board of Trustees. Dr. Rodriguez, how's everybody doing? Um, I don't have very much to say. I'm just, I don't know where Richard's at. But um, as we get close to, to the end here, it's the school year, finish line, um, I just want to say, I want to thank our kitchen ladies for doing such a great job, our um, campus securities for keeping our schools safe and, you know, going through some hard times themselves right now, um, doing their job and trying to keep everybody safe, classified and teachers. Uh, and to all our staff members out there, that are doing a good job in our classified employees. Um, to our ground department, the maintenance department, who's now, now that the rain stopped, we got a lot of work to do. You know, grass is getting crazy out there, so we're trying to do a good job on that. Um, and the last thing I wanna say is on June the, the 10th, we had a lot, on June the 10th, we're having a fundraiser from 11 to four at Carmona's. Um, it's a dinner to help our classified employees who were affected by the flood in Pajaro. So, Clint, thank you for donating $200, and I want to tell everybody out here that if, uh, if you guys can match that, that'd be great. It all goes to our classified employees. I know, I'm, I'm always good at that. So, so. Can you say the date again? It is uh, June the 10th, Saturday, from 11 to 4. It's going to be for the classified employees that were affected from the flood, and it's uh, at Carmona's. It's a uh, chicken dinner, rice and beans, so. Um, if you have 200 bucks, you want to give it to me right now, it'd be great to take it and keep, put your name down and uh, pass it on. And um, other than that, have a great weekend, everybody. Excellent. Any public speakers for that item? All right. Uh, 8.3, Pavan. 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 Good evening, uh, President and Home Board of Trustees and Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Dr. Ivan Alcaraz and I'm the Director of Student Services and I get to walk you through student services and what we're doing currently right now, so it's a pleasure of mine. Our department has been very busy not cl just closing the year, but we're also getting ready to open up a, a new school year. Uh, our team just reviewed and processed 555 intra-district transfers and 368 intra-district transfers. This requires a process of communicating not only with our families, but also for the sending and receiving districts. So as you can imagine, it's quite the task for our staff. Our child welfare and attendance team is close to wrapping up the year. We will be holding our last student attendance review board, SARB meeting. We're calling it our super SARB. Um, our membership for the, for the board has actually grown. We're very thankful to our many partners that serve on the board and who are working with our team to address student attendance through phone calls, home visits, and truancy mediation. Our team has been able to connect students with resources as a means to improve their attendance. Our student services is also currently supporting our sites with their PBIS um, ap applications for recognition, for statewide recognition. We have various sites who are ready to apply for the next recognition tier, demonstrating growth and progress towards our PBIS implementation efforts. 
who also were instrumental in the uh, supporting our families who were impacted by the floods. Our Healthy Start registrars continue to have constant communication um, with other staff members and, communi and connecting resources to our McKinney Vento students uh, who made sure they had what they needed then and have what they need now. Our pairing workshop at the Family Engagement and Wellness Center is just coming to a conclusion. Last week, we just ended our, work our art workshop series, which is a partnership with the Santa Cruz County Arts Council, so we were just ending that last week. Um, I also want to let you know that Student Service Systems continues to have a strong focus on school safety. We continue to work with site administrators to review emergency protocols and how to best prepare for emergency. Just today, I had the pleasure of working with the Radcliffe administration. We did a walkthrough through the campus, and during my visit, we did look at their evacuation procedures, protocols, and rally points as well. So we're also doing that. And last but not least, I could not uh, give out this good notice or good news to the board board as well, and I'm sure we'll hear more about it, but our coordinator of counseling services alongside with our impact and resource development officer, Andrea Willey, and other partners um, and ventured off in applying for a, a grant with the uh, Student Behavioral Health Incentive Program grant, and I'm pleased to announce that PBUSD Student Services is a recipient of the grant at the SB HIP grant for a total of $1.93 million. So as you can imagine, my team is going to be very, very busy trying to get our implementation efforts for next year. So thank you very much, and we'll, good night. Thank you. Any public speakers here? Uh, CWA, Communication Workers of America? Not tonight. All right, we'll move on to our action items. Uh, item 9.1, adopting resolution 22-23-52, Acknowledging May 2nd, 2023 is National Teacher Appreciation Day. The report will be presented. You do not look like Allison. I am not Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Saxton. Thank you. Uh, good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. It's my privilege to be able to present uh, our resolution acknowledging May 2nd, 2023 is National Teacher Appreciation Day. And sorry, my name is Brian Saxton. I'm the Director of HR. So uh, May 2nd is the Nationwide Day of the Teacher. Uh, PVS, PVUSD teachers are deeply committed to the success of every student and have many extraordinary skills they pull from, reach, from to reach and teach students. Uh, just a listing a little bit. They are kind, patient, hardworking, dedicated, and understanding professionals that mold our children's lives in a positive direction. So I would uh, request that the board approves this resolution for May 2nd, being declared as the National Teacher Appreciation Day. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do. We have one. Chris. Sorry. You just, you just have a really interesting agenda. So, <laughs> um, so I, I just want to, if you heard me before coming to resolutions, you know, like, I'm partial to substance. And, and I appreciate that we're taking the time to do this. Um, but I, I also just, it's been a hard year. Like I felt like this year, like it's kind of dangerous to care. I had in the last week a student tell me, oh, you care too much, right? Uh, as I'm regulating a phone issue, um, she was saying that. And, and like she didn't give me a hard time, but she was like, you know, those, those kids, like, you know, I, I gave patience with you, but, you know, I see the struggle. And so basically what I would ask is that um, we kind of reflect on this year and think, because sometimes if I see the stuff about the shortages, but I don't always feel like our management style recognizes it because just the, the, the way like we'll get more stuff on our plate without a second thought. Um, the way um, when teachers are trying to do their job and like we've lost certain systems so we're finding workarounds and then um, it involves communication and then we get hit with um, sometimes pretended FERPA violations where um, I think we, we need like some clarity for, for admin about that, um, about what really is a FERPA violation, because when we, when we claim FERPA violations that aren't, it makes it seem like it's part of a, a cover-up or something, or it's, a, it's an attempt to uh, avoid any exposure of possible inequities between students. And like for substance, besides that kind of training, um, I would also say teachers need to have the right to view the cameras upon request, because there was a teacher at my site who wound up getting um, some vandalism on their vehicle, and it took a long time for them to even get permission to see the camera, and then um, later that kind of per the the 
footage was mysteriously lost. They're having to come in early to even get the chance to view it. It was, it was really not comforting. So I, I'd like to see where can we make sure that we're living out this, all our ideals, throughout the year. Thank you. Do we have any discussion from the board? Great for our student trustee, what do you have? Thank you. Um, this is semi-related, but um, I wish I could stay here longer because it is a really interesting agenda. But um, I just wanted to highlight like all of the resolutions that are being brought forth th tonight. Um, all of them from the student mental health one to the school nurse and national teachers and classified employees as well. So thank you for acknowledging all of these really important, you know, topics. And also, um, especially on the AAPI Heritage Month, um, that one is also super important and I wanted to stay for that one. But, you know, as a senior coming into like my last weeks, as you can imagine, it's very busy. Um, but I just hope that the board is able to work collaboratively with the community and listen and really um, validate the voices who are willing to speak up for everyone else. And um, I'm also really looking forward to the tentative agreements on the salary increases. And I'm really proud of the progress we've made so far. And I'm very hopeful for the next school year. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, Trustee DeSerpa? Um, I would love to make a motion to support this item. Um, if it weren't for our teachers, um, we would be in, in bad shape. We know we need more. We appreciate all the hard work and all the filling in that teachers do. And um, I'm, um, anyway, I'm just in full support. And thank you very much to our teaching staff. And Trustee DeSerpa just beat me to the mic, so I'll second it. <laughs> All right. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously, 6 0 white. Thank you. All right. Our next resolution, uh, item 9.2, um, resolution 22-23-51, acknowledging May 21st through 27th, 2023, as Classified School Employee Week. That'll be presented by Pam Shanks. Good evening. Thank you, uh, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and uh, Board of Trustees. I am Pam Shanks, Director of Classified Personnel for the District. And this evening, I have the honor and privilege of presenting um, the resolution for acknowledging May 21st to 27th as Classified School Employee Week. Um, every aspect of our students' educational experience is impacted by a classified school employee, uh, beginning when our students board a school bus um, all the way to the end of the day. Um, from the classroom to the playground, to the school cafeteria, to the school office, human resources office, business office, and many of the other uh, classified school em employees that Gus mentioned earlier. Um, I just want to thank the board for recognizing and valuing the work of our classified employees and ask that you approve this resolution tonight. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. Any discussion from the board? I'd like to make a motion to approve this um, resolution, number 22-23-51, acknowledging um, May 21st to the 27th as Classified School Employee Week, and to give a thank you to all of our classified employees for all the hard work you do. Thank you. A second? I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries uh, 601. All right. Moving on to item 9.3, adopt resolution 22-23-53, acknowledging National School Nurse Day. Report will be presented by Heather Gorman, our SELPA Director, Special Services. And it really is Heather. Sorry, I guess, can you hear me now? <laughs> Today I bring forward a resolution to celebrate and honor our school nurses. National School Nurses Day is celebrated annually on May 10th. This year, the focus is raising the awareness of the important roles nurses play in society and for us specifically in PBUSD. 
Nurses work with our students, and I, don't, I know I can't specifically name everything they do, but I'll name a few. They support IEPs, healthcare plans, training for students and staff around diabetes and seizures, healthcare plans, and, and talking to doctors. They make sure we are compliant with immunizations and a training they did today for all of the health assistants in the district focused on how to stop severe bleeding. This type of training can save lives. They support students and student health daily. They make a difference in the lives of students and we want to recognize the contributions that they are making to health and the learning of our children. And from the resolution, therefore be it resolved that the PVUSD Board of Education celebrates and acknowledges the accomplishments of school nurses everywhere and their efforts of meeting the needs of today's students by improving the delivery of health care in our schools. Thank you, and I want to give a big shout out for PVUSD nurses. <laughs> do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. I'll, I'll take a point of privilege and make a motion on this one. <laughs> Go for it, Jen. <laughs> but I just, I also want to say, you know, it's like, you know, school nurses have been, you know, my, my classmates, you know, in nursing school, school nurses have been my colleagues, they've been my students, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a nursing instructor. And, you know, it's like some of our future school nurses will be my students and come through, you know, the program where I teach. Mm -hmm. And um, just knowing the challenges that our school nurses face, it, it's a difficult job. It's an incredibly difficult job. Like nursing is an incredible, it's an incredible job. I, you know, wouldn't trade it for the world except for teaching other nurses. <laughs> but um, it's, there's something special about school nurses. I think about my own experiences, you know, as a student. I think about my kids' experiences, you know, and the differences they make. Um, I know we have a long meeting. I could go on. I'll leave it there, but. Thank you. Anyone else? Go school nurses. Yeah, we're so grateful for the people who choose to work here at PBUSD. We know that they could make a lot more money in other places, and it takes a very special type of person to work here with children. So thank you, and I will happily second this motion. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 6-0-1. All right, on to item 9.4, resolution 22-23-55, recognizing April as um, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Report will be presented by uh, Lisa Garia, Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education. Thank you, good evening, Board President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. Before you is resolution number 22-23-55, recognizing May as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month is an annual celebration and recognition of the historical and cultural contributions of individuals and groups of Asian Pacific Islander descent to the United States. This includes cultures from the entire Asian continent, including East, Southeast, and South Asian, and the Pacific Islands. Whereas immigrant refugees and American-born community members of Asian and Pacific Islander ancestry have contributed immensely to the growth and stability of the state of California, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District, and community by deepening our American values of family, education, social justice, and community, which further shapes the social and economic character of this country. It's one of the most powerful paragraphs that I believe that's in this resolution. So now, therefore, be resolved that the Pajaro Valley Unified School District proclaim May 2023 as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month to inspire equity and celebrate diversity within our community, to elevate the voices and honor the stories of our local Asian American and Pacific Islander history, to educate through our ethnic studies courses, and to partner with local agencies such as the Tobera Project to educate teachers, staff, and students of the conscious and unconscious biases that pr are pre prevalent in our society today. And thank you, and with that, I ask for the approval of the resolution. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? No, we do not. Any discussion from the board? I would um, like to um, 
I, I make a motion to approve resolution 22-23-55, recognizing April as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And also just wanted to uh, make an announcement that uh, this weekend um, in Salinas, in uh, Chinatown, on Saturday, April 29th, uh, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., there will be the 14th Annual Asian Festival. So Thank I you. encourage all to please go out and support that event and the nonprofit supporting it. Anyone else? Do I need a second? I'll second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 601. Thank you. All right, so item 9.5, approve resolution 22-23-56, acknowledging May 8th, 2023 to May 12th, 2023 as Student Mental Health Awareness Week. Report will be presented by Christy McQueen, our coordinator, uh, and it is Christy, great, uh, academics and social emotional counseling programs. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. It's my pleasure to present this um, resolution in honor of mental, National Mental Health Awareness Month and in support of the California Assembly Concurrent Resolution 29, we propose for May 8th through May 12th to be Student Mental Health Awareness Week for PBUSD schools. Providing wraparound services at the PBUSD Family Engagement and Wellness Center, mental health clinicians at many school sites, social emotional counselors for every site, a social emotional learning platform for all sites, and continuously assessing our services for opportunities to serve our students equitably. PBUSD, PVUSD has been leading the county in mental health services for students. This resolution is an important public commitment to our continued work and another opportunity to create safety and understanding throughout our schools and the community. And with that, I will not read the whole resolution. I recommend folks to read it and uh, we'll post it on the student services website as well, page. Um, Whereas May is National Mental Health Awareness Month, which gives us the opportunity to raise awareness about the importance of mental health and so social emotional learning while expanding understanding of the mental or behavioral health issues facing the community and reducing the stigma many experience. And whereas PVUSD is dedicated to providing universal social emotional learning to all students, teaching the castle competencies of self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills and responsible decision making. And whereas PVUSD is in alignment with the California Department of Education statement that social emotional learning is fundamental to academic success and must be woven into the work of every teacher in every classroom and every after school and summer learning program if we truly want to prepare all our students for college and careers. And whereas the need for comprehensive and coordinated mental and behavioral health services for students in school is a critical part of an overall education plan and a priority in PVUSD. And whereas it is important to set aside a week that recognizes the mental health of students in order to support the needs and well-being of students um, in California. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees, I'm asking, please do you recognize May 8th to May 12th as Student Mental Health Awareness Week and approve this resolution. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do. We have one. Roddy? I think that's 9.6. Okay. Oh, aren't we? Oh, I'm so sorry. Pardon. Never mind. I'm jumping ahead. All right. Do we have any discussion from the board? I would love to make the motion for this one since I am a mental health clinician. Yay. And congratulations to our district and to the people who worked on the incredible grant that we just received. It's very exciting. I can't, wa can't wait to hear how we'll be implementing that on behalf of our students. So um, I make a motion to support Mental Health Week for children in our district. Thank you. I'd like to second that. Great. All right, we have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 601.
All right. Moving on to item 9.6, approve tentative agreement salary schedules in AB 1200. Financial impacts of tentative agreement with Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers report will be presented by That's Allison me. Niazawa, Assistant yes. Superintendent of Human Resources. It's really me. Yes. Thank you, President Home Board of Trustees and Dr. Rodriguez. I'm very excited for this item tonight um, for a multitude of reasons. One, um, I think all of the TAs and all of the salary schedules and everything before you really um, demonstrates the collaboration that we had between the two bargaining or between the, the two teams that we had. Um, there are 14 MOUs and TAs. There's 37 salary schedules. Um, and I just really appreciate the team. I really appreciate Roddy um, over the weekend just making sure that everything was up there and I's were dotted and T's were crossed because um, there was a lot of work that went into this. Um, we started negotiations with PVFT in November um, with the goal of ending before spring break. Um, and so uh, we were very productive all throughout that time. On the 29th, we set a schedule of starting at 9 o'clock, and we were going to work until we were done. And 12 hours later, <laughs> we were done. So I think it says a lot about the collaboration in the room, the teams, the conversations that we had. Um, and we were able to come together on all the days we negotiated, but as well as that last day. Um, to really get to the heart of some of the issues that we were trying to solve and how can we work together to find language that we could both uh, work with and live with um, putting in the salary schedule. So some highlights I want to, since again, I'm like, there's a lot of TAs, there's 14 of them. Um, some highlights, of course, are our salary schedules for this school year, which is a 10% increase to all um, PBFT bargaining unit or all members. Um, and then for next school year, for 23-24, we have the 3% for adult ed in our ECE employees and then 5% for our K-12, so as well as a bunch of one-time monies in, in the two different years. Um, and then no changes to health and welfare benefits because we know how important those are to our, our, our employees. Um, <clears throat> some things that we did try to address, we've heard a lot about time and that although people are subbing on their prep, they also, and they're, we're compensating them for that time, they just would like the time themselves. So in the contract, we did agree to some Wednesdays. We went from two Wednesdays where teachers have time available to, to them to six and in addition because of the impact that COVID has had with people being out sick um, we did an additional MOU for four more days so everyone will have 10 um, Wednesdays which is one per month for the school for the whole entire school year um, so that's something that I think we're proud of that we were able to work together on to try to remedy um, we did put limits on special ed teachers and their um, subbing in the subbing for other people that are out um, because we understand the statutory obligations they have in completing IEPs and so being able to count on that and making sure that the time they do have to fulfill those IEPs was super important to PVFT and it's also important to the district as well. Um, it's in this, it's referenced in this item but it's also a separate item which is the optional uh, additional work days and so teachers and our staff put in a lot of extra hours and a lot of extra time and so that was their work that they already do is being honored by the additional optional work days. Um, which are how we address the calendar article um, that was part of the sunshine and like I said you'll see it in a separate um, item a little bit later in the agenda. Um, we took on the task of creating a special services article um, otherwise known as our SELPA article but it's special services. Um, I wish that Brandon were here tonight because I wanted to quote him but I'll do it anyway. So taking on this big article it was a lot. We have a lot of language and we were trying to put it all in one place so that our teachers and our staff can know where to look um, for contract language. And so it got presented to us pretty early on and we had it for about two months um, because there was a lot and we really wanted to look at the information and synthesize it, look in the contract. And when we presented it back um, and we were leaving and Brandon said, I was wondering why it took you guys so long. Why weren't you just going to cross everything out and just give it back to us? But you actually went through it and read it and were thoughtful about your proposal back. And so I really appreciated him saying that. It was, it was kind of funny, but it, it is true. I think it highlights that we were really trying to work together and taking the language that both sides were proposing to come up with the best solution we could at the, at the table. And so I, I, um, I really appreciated that. Um, we've expanded our options for bilingual stipends, so it was only for a finite group of people and we've expanded that language a little bit more so more employees have opportunities to receive a bilingual stipend. Um, and then we did a lot of clarifying language for our adult ed article and our ECE article. We have a lot of past practice or, or practices that we have but they aren't actually written down and so we really wanted to memorialize the practices that we have so that if directors, union members, people in HR leave, that we can um, memorialize the practices that are good for our students and our staff. And so we did a lot of work to kind of clarify that language. 
Um, so with all of that being said, I respectfully request that you approve all the MOUs, TAs, and salary schedules, and the AB 1200 public disclosure, please. Thank you. Um, we have a public speaker to this item? We have a public speaker to this item, Roddy. Okay, good evening again. I am not gonna go through everything because I don't have the time Allison had, but um, I do, I just do wanna give a quick thank you and shout out to my negotiations team, uh, Rachel Hitchcock, Greg Tucker, Shereen Gadarzi, Ryan Hall, Brandon Niniz, and Chris Webb, as well as the district team. Um, of course, Allison, Clint, uh, Yvonne Alcarez, Heather Morin, Brian Saxon, and then um, as Administrative Assistant Day, we wouldn't be able to do it without Lindsay, who showed up and stayed late with us all of those evenings as well, Lindsay Starks. Um, so thank you to all of them. I think this was an incredibly productive round of negotiations. Um, as you all know, this was a three-year agreement. We had essentially the entire collective bargaining agreement open, which is an incredible amount of language and work to do, as well as total compensation. Um, of course, we didn't get everything we hoped for, and, but a collective bargaining agreement is a living document, um, and it has been improved upon since we became a union charter in 1969, so it will continue to be improved upon as we continue negotiations. But I'm just incredibly proud of the work we were able, we were able to do to collaborate on, um, and I think we got so many wins that is gonna really impact the work of our teachers, the work of our um, psychologists, our nurses, our special ed team, like Allison said. Um, and actually, I think we started in October, but we, we, have, we have, I've been on negotiations for a while, and we have, we have taken over a year just doing total comp, and we did an entire collective bargaining agreement in less than a year. So it's um, very proud work, and like Allison said, we made that agreement to finish before spring break, and we, by golly, we're gonna stay there all night until we did it, and we did. So I also am standing up here um, asking you all to please approve this TA and all of these MOUs. Thank you. Thank you. Before I open it up to discuss, or other discussion from the board, I just want to acknowledge, you know, as I was going through these, you know, uh, TAs, I was so pleased at like the edits I saw that were bringing in inclusive language. And I was, it just, it made me so happy. And, and, and thank you for doing that. Thank you for everybody who's gonna re read that and not have those little tweaks. Thank you. So, are there any other discussion points? Uh, bravo on the TAs themselves, but <laughs> that, that, was an extra, language, yeah. that was an extra special thing. Um, I, I would just like to say thank you to everybody who worked together on this. I know that um, as a sitting board member, I've been through this a lot of times, and it, it is um, personally sometimes very painful to, to hear teachers come up because the truth is all of us you and all of us and all of them, we all want the best for the kids in this district and that means having the best teachers, staff, money can buy. And, um, and it's more than that, it's your benefits, it's everything. So from the bottom of my heart, I'm so pleased that this was um, finished and that um, as Trustee Holmes said, um, language was incorporated that's more reflective of who we are as a district. So thank you very much, Roddy and, and your team, and Allison and your team. Trustee Scout. Yeah, thank you, Allison and Clint, and to our teacher union team for the six, seven months of work to bring this for us today. Uh, negotiations are, are difficult, complicated, uh, very necessary. Certainly, I'm very much in support and happy to see a lot of the improvements uh, that were agreed to. Um, and so, naturally, I'll be supporting it. Um, I know we still have work to do. And, and also, I just want to say, outside of negotiating, there's things we can do to retain. I, I think across the board, we know we, want, we need to attract and we need to retain teachers. And the reality we is, is that we will always be in competition with nearby districts. And I know we can't pay, be, pay as much as San Jose where they're starting people at 70 and maybe moving up to 80. I think we're gonna be going up from, we were at 45 recently 
and we're at 50, and now we're going to be going up to like 57, I think, if I can at the very bottom of the scale. I'm talking about the very bottom of the scale. Very bottom, sorry. Or, yeah, yeah, very 50. bottom. Yeah, and then I think with okay. this, we go at around 57. That's yeah. great. We're going to be entering into uh, better parity with nearby districts. Um, and the reality is we all know it's a very, very expensive place to live. And and we need more housing options. And I know um, that's something uh, many of us here at the district want to help alleviate. So this is very good. I'm very happy. Thank you. Uh, more work to do. Um, I'm happy to see about the uh, fourth grade going from 34 to 32. I think that's a positive thing. I've, it's come to my attention that some of our schools de facto have smaller classroom sizes for fourth and fifth graders than some other ones do. And just wanting to have greater equity there. Um, I think anybody knows about teaching or been in classrooms. It's when you go from 24 to 34 or 24 to 5 to 35, it's a big jump between third and fourth grade, and it's not easy for our kids. So I think we all recognize, everybody recognizes smaller classroom sizes are better. So I'm glad we have a smaller, a lower maximum. But I also, as a district and, and administration, we could also, whatever we can do to lower classroom sizes going forward, ongoing, is going to be very beneficial to all of our kids. So thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone want to make a motion? <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve. All right, I have a first second. and I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Oh, okay. Motion carries 7-0. Um, oh. <laughs> Yay, I know. <laughs> All right, moving on to item 9.7, approved total compensation for classified and certificated management employees for the 2021-2022 and 2022-2023 school years. Still Allison. Yes, still me. Thank you, President Home Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. So before you tonight is a total compensation for our classified and certificated management for 21-22 and 22-23. Um, so as the board, I believe, is heard with we've had some reductions in the management um, over the last few years since Dr. Rodriguez has come into the district we've gone from 174 to 152 which will be next school year um, and some of that work has been redistributed so although you have a, two increases for the classified and the certificated there's also a classified restructure as well um, and that restructure is based on the some of those admin reductions I'm speaking about so to highlight those we've had as of last year the reduction of an assistant superintendent um, and some of that work has then been shifted to other administrators, one in particular being our risk and safety manager, which is why the justification for a salary increase or range increase. Um, m and we've had a reduction of a planning, um, planning manager, which has then put all of that work under the director of m and and so therefore that is where the, the justification for moving up that range. Um, and then for the payroll manager, when we reduce the administrative services position that Clint vacated a few years ago, um, that work, we didn't replace that work anywhere, but a lot of that work has gone to our payroll manager. Um, and so that is what is behind um, that increase. Similarly to when we've done the restructures um, with both certificated and management, in, or excuse me, certificated and classified in the past, the current employees in those positions will not see an immediate increase. Their, their um, step placement will be reduced to what their current salary is. So it's not necessarily, the range increase is not a, intended to be a salary increase, it's more to um, honor the work ongoing. So those will be um, adjusted accordingly for this school year and then the, the raises will be in effect after that. So with all of that being said, um, I respectfully request that you approve the management salary schedules for certificated and classified for this school year and last school year. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do. And I will call you up um, by three, and uh, if you could come up as three, and by three, and if I mispronounce your name, please do correct me. Amy Thomas, Sarah Brothers, and Maricela Rocha. <clears throat> Somebody was very tall. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez, President Holmes, and the Board of Trustees. We met a few weeks ago, but for your reference, my name is Amy Thomas. I'm the principal of the Watsonville Charter School of the Arts best school on the planet. I'm here tonight to remind you of the powerful and heartfelt comments you heard um, at the last board meeting. This management team is worth your time, your energy, and your positive votes. 
because let me tell you something, we do matter. I'll be speaking later in support of our cabinet members, but I would like to leave you with one suggestion. Please, please come to our sites. Accept our many invitations, as we are doing incredible things with our students in school communities. As a site principal for nine years, I've only had one visit from my board trustee, and that's because of a failed attempt at a student of the year presentation in this very room. If you are hesitant to see why we matter, come visit us and you'll quickly find out. Thank you for supporting us. Good evening, Board of Trustees. I'm Sarah Brothers. I'm the Arts Education Director at Arts Council Santa Cruz County. And I've had the honor in my role for the last 11 years in partnering with PVUSD and with Extended Learning. And I have seen during that time significant increases in equitable access to arts education for our PVUSD students. And that was in both music and visual arts. And when I first started there, there was probably only about 0 0.02 full-time equivalent for the arts, which is crazy. And over the last 10 years or so, it's through the creativity and the dedication and the support of your district's administrators, and that's extended learning, and that's our principals, and that's Michelle Rodriguez. You know, we have been able to increase that to over 60 FTE and become a model in the state as far as increasing access to arts education through the local control accountability plan. And that's amazing. Um, and I see that those administrators, Stephanie Monroe, again, Michelle Rodriguez, Jennifer Bruno, principals that we partner with, all really value arts education as a holistic um, part of a well-rounded quality education for your students. And I believe that something special is happening here right now and can continue to happen. Um, if these administrators are fairly compensated um, because they need to be retained. It's been my experience that losing key district personnel over the years creates barriers to access, inconsistencies, and slows down progress. And as partners, Arts Council Santa Cruz County urges you to please um, support and value your district's administrators the way we do and ensure that they can continue to serve our students in our community to reach their fullest potential. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board Trustees. My name is Maricela Rocha on behalf of Fitness for Life. I'm here today to urge you to approve this agenda item. We are very grateful for the opportunity to work with Expanded Learning Administration Team and site administrators. Expanded Learning Management has consistently gone above and beyond the service of providing necessary resources to our students' success and well-being. They consistently provide my peers and I with the support to teach nutrition classes from kindergarten to middle school, garden education and cooking classes where we cook what we harvest from our school gardens and teach the importance of physical fitness to PV, PVUSD students to improve our students' lives. Without their support, we would not be able to provide year-round enrichment programs to our schools. I strongly believe that their contribution justifies an adjustment to their salary which will reflect the level of dedication, professionalism, and integrity in which our administrators demonstrate each and every day. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Isabella, Brian Saxton, and Rich Ariano. Good evening, President Holmes, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. So I urge you to approve this action item. I'm Isabel Tonser, I've been the Executive Director of El Sistema Santa Cruz, and it has been my true honor to work with the school district for the last six years. We are now in nine sites, two in the morning and seven in the afternoon. And to build that program, I have seen very closely the work that the management puts every single day 
for the students. We wouldn't be here without you, and the students wouldn't uh, be benefiting from this extra program in the afternoon and in the morning if it wouldn't be for the management, principal, and everybody else involved. So I really urge you to approve this action item. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Brian Saxon. I'm Director of HR. I just want to encourage the Board to approve the salary increase for classified certificated management. As you heard a few meetings ago, management is an integral part of PVUSD uh, and deserves to be included in the salary increase that other units are receiving. It's my hope that you would acknowledge the dedication that management has to this district and approve the salary increase that was proposed tonight. Thank you. Um, good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Rich Ariano. I'm the Director of Purchasing for the School District, and um, I really struggled with what I wanted to come forward and say today, so um, I feel like I have a very unique perspective for, for the district. I'm an employee, former CSEA member. I'm a parent, a constituent, right? Like, I've got all these different things, and um, I just want to make it kind of known that the group of leaders that we have in the district right now are the most connected that I've kind of ever seen, right? Like, um, for me as the purchasing director, I sit very far away from a classroom, right? Like, I'm not in front of students. I'm not on a site every single day, um, unless I'm dropping off my daughter. Um, so I, I, I see some things that, that are going on, but I'm unfortunately not able to be on a school site as much as I want to. Um, so, the things I want to bring forward for what I do, the things that I recognize are my connection, like the responsibility that I take with just jokingly way we kind of say, I, we buy stuff, right? It's buying stuff for what, for what I do, whether it's supplies or contracts for services, whatever it may be, it's nobody needs to know how it happens, right? I'm happy to talk to anybody that ever wants to talk purchasing, that's great. Nobody really ever wants to do that, but my, um, my role is to make sure that my staff and our purchasing department support all of our sites and their staff so that they don't have to worry about purchasing. They can just run their school, connect with their families, connect with their students, involve parents in everything they need to do. And um, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that everybody that's a manager in this room has my number. If they, if they need me, they can call me, they can text me, they can, they can do whatever they, they need to. And I, and I, I hope I respond. I, I, I'm pretty sure I do because um, if they don't, they, they let me know that too. But, um, you know, the expectations are higher than they've ever been. They're high today. They'll be even higher tomorrow. And um, we'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Dr. Nancy Bilicic, Ruth Wigga Young, and Peggy Pugh. Good evening, President Holm, trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. Well, I've already addressed you before, we all have, but tonight I'm looking forward to celebrating after your vote because you have already voted for the teachers and I know that you believe in management. I've talked to many of you. you I have always been treated with respect and I know that I'm looking forward to that tonight. I just want to celebrate. So I'm going to um, ask you to support the leadership team. And we know there's money in the budget, and I just want to thank you. Thank you for your hard work, and thank you for your support. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. I am Ruth Bogian, the Risk and Safety Manager for the District, and I really just wanted to take the opportunity to thank you for bringing back this item tonight. Um, I really hope you heard us at the last special board meeting and how the decisions you make as trustees really affect our lives. And I hope we can get your support tonight in voting yes on this item, so thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. My name is Peggy Pugh, and I am the Executive Director for Teaching and Learning for PBUSD. 
At the board meeting on March 30th, I spoke in support of all administrators receiving the salary increase that other PVUSD employees received for the 21-22 and 22-23 school years. Our district leadership has not received an increase on the salary schedule in many years. Tonight, I'm again speaking in favor of the positive actions I know you will take on be behalf of all managers in PVUSD. That includes our superintendent and cabinet. Thank you very much. Our next three speakers are Andrea Willey, Julie Edwards, and um, the next card has two names on it, Judith Camacho and Don Burgett. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez Cabinet, PVUSD colleagues, and community. Uh, my classified and certificated management colleagues deserve nothing less than the raises before you as recommended by staff this evening. Following the many fervent and heartfelt comments at the March 30th meeting, I urge you to approve without condition these well-deserved raises. And I'd like to echo what um, Rich said about this being perhaps the most connected, committed um, management team um, in the history of this district. Um, these people work hard for our students, for other staff, for community, and for our families. We are the fabric of the Pajaro Valley. Please support this team. Good evening, Board President Holm, trustees, and Superintendent Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Julie Edwards, and I serve as the coordinator of career technical education for PVUSD under the transformative leadership of Dr. Rodriguez, Lisa Aguirre, Casey Klappenbach, Allison Nazawa, and Clint Rucker. At the March 30th meeting, I conveyed what being an administrator in PVUSD looks like for me. In summary, contributing wholeheartedly in an area of significant focus in service of our deserving students and teachers in the CTE program. You heard from members of our CTE team who I am proud to work alongside to create high quality educational experiences for our students to enrich, inspire, and fuel their future aspirations. I ask each of you without hesitation to please act responsibly and approve the total compensation for classified and certificated management employees for the 21-22-22-23 school years tonight. Thank you. Muy buenas noches, good evening. Um, my name is Judith Camacho. And I'm Don Burgett. And we are here as co-executive directors of Life Lab. We wanna thank uh, all of the trustees um, who have voted for Life Lab to be present here in the district. And we want to uh, really support the increase of classified and certification, uh, certificated um, staff. And I just wanted to give you, a, a, first of all, an overview of, of how many schools we are. Don was gonna cover that and then give you a few examples of how critical that team, the certificated and um, classified team is to the work that we provide you all. Thank you. It's been our, and we're doing this because we're co-executive directors, yes. so we always do this together. Um, uh, it's been our, our real privilege and honor to get to partner more closely with the district for 10 years now since uh, coming back into partnership after uh, previous years uh, in our 45-year history um, to really develop long-term sustainable garden-based education programs um, for health and wellness, academics, connection with nature, um, so many different things that it can bring and that started with one school, H.A. Hyde, in 2013, and uh, it's 10 schools this year, and we've been very excited to announce recently the uh, next three schools that we're partnering with this closely, um, putting staff on the ground alongside all of the wonderful teachers and staff um, at three more schools this summer and then uh, three more the following year. Um, so we get the chance to work very closely with um, everyone from uh, all the different offices and sites, um, and we get to see day in, day out, everything that we've been hearing about and, and witnessing, and especially seeing the long, long hours that you all put in, um, including, uh, in our case, with Dr. Rodriguez and uh, Principal Dr. Jackie Medina now, 
Um, uh, <laughs> um, and so many other staff, the custodians, uh, the front office staff who make everything work. Um, uh, but particularly, you know, because of the beautiful uh, opportunity at the Starlight uh, campus for the, the development of the special projects there, um, seeing uh, just 12 hour days and seven days a week often. So, thank you. Please yeah. provide the increase. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Our next three speakers are Herlindo, Saulo, and Sergio. Sergio. Good evening, President Holmes, Dr. Rodriguez, board members, cabinet. My name is Arlindo Fernandez, and I'm the director of maintenance and operation. First of all, I want to thank you guys for bringing this item back to the table. Um, we're all here. We're all dedicated to the, to the job here. We all work long hours, weekends, holidays, you name it, we're here. We're all very connected with each other. Um, and I just want to please ask you to consider giving us this, approving this race. Thank you. Um, good evening, President Holmes, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees, members of the cabinet. My name is Salud Tirado and I'm a supervisor of maintenance. Um, last time I wasn't prepared to speak. I'm not prepared this time either, but I mean, I changed my speech like 10 times in the last two hours, but I just want you guys to know that we all work very hard out here. We're part of the same team. So let's lift up together. Thank you. Hello, how are you doing? Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon, President Holmes, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees and Cabinet. Uh, my name is Sergio Ambriz, and I'm the Assistant Director for Maintenance and Operations and Facilities. As a former classified employee, I work hard every day. I continue to work harder as a director. I see the impact that administration makes and all the tireless hours that we have to work um, on a daily basis, even on weekends. We work the weekends and check our emails 24 hours. Um, we're checking emails and we get a lot of emergencies, especially on the weekends. Um, we, By you not approving the raise, you are stating that our work ethic are not valued and the long hours that we have to work, especially cabinet members, are not valued. So we hope that you guys approve um, this race and that you guys value pretty much all of our time. And as well, you guys see it in Pajaro Middle School, um, how we're, we, dealt, we dealt with um, the flood and how fast we reacted to that matter because we have a great team and just not uh, um, our um, cabinet members, but as well, everybody behind me. We did everything and as well with all the trustees. So appreciate it, thank you. Our next three are um, Lauren Adock and Stephanie Monroe and Chris Webb. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Lauren Adcock. I'm the manager of payroll and benefits. Thank you for bringing this item back for consideration tonight. We hope after the 70 plus comments you heard at the special meeting on admin salaries that you've been given all of the information that you need and you have a more clear understanding of why we deserve a raise. We hope that you vote yes tonight on all raises brought forward, not just the classified and certificated management. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez, President Holm, and Board of Trustees. My name is Stephanie Monroe, and I'm the District Coordinator of Gifted and Talented in Visual and Performing Arts. As a district administrator and former principal, I've leaned on my colleagues in management and the cabinet, not only for their leadership and competence, but for their support through preparation of everything from professional development, SSTs, IEPs, personnel issues, building issues, emergencies, lockdowns, injuries, illnesses, COVID response, fights, the death of students and family members, and responding to threats of self-harm 
and harm to others at all hours of the day, night, weekends, and holidays. Their work never, ever stops. And the hard work and support and collaboration has continued even while serving in my new position in supporting the arts during special events on weekends and evenings, the purchases of supplies and instruments and professional development of our specialists. They're devoted to our students and to our community and they deserve a raise. I'm asking that each board, a member of the board, approve the total compensation of the classified and certificated management for the 21, 22, and 22, 23 school years tonight. Thank you so, so much. Okay, um, I want to begin with, with um, Trustee DeSerpa at that, that March special session board meeting. You, you had mentioned um, Dr. Rodriguez raising expectations across the district. I think that's probably true, but it hasn't been true with, with the Renaissance and to the extent that the admin that I was referring to at that last meeting were, were following your direction, I believe. So, and we, d we have gone down in terms of attendance, credits, uh, we've even officially this year lowered the graduation requirements and my entire time I've been here it's been about like overcoming some of the stereotypes about Renaissance so, I, so in, in a way I felt like I've had to work against my own admin this year um, I thought that was a little bit unfair for um, to follow up on that to, for, for the teachers to kind of get blamed for, te for that admin leaving when we're not the ones who told that admin to break the program and also when we're advocating for students to the extent that supporting students puts teachers in conflict with admin, well, I'm sorry, I'm lining up with the students and I, I take no qualms about it. I'll defend it to the end. So, and I'm also really proud when I reflect on that night that teachers can come here and they don't just show up when it's about their pay, they've showed up consistently. And even when it is nights about their pay, not every teacher here talks about their pay. Sometimes they're still pushing for the students. So I was really proud about that. Um, and another thing I thought was unfair is that I felt it was unfair the way a couple of people on the board and, and, um, and some, of the, in the, some of the commenters kind of attacked the board for putting this on hold. I think that was the right move because doesn't it feel like if we approve this tonight that we are more unified? I felt like it would have been disrespectful as a teacher to approve that that night. Also, the fact that it was mixed with the cabinet just felt it's not on the up and up. So I appreciate that that was separated. I also appreciate the, the change to have um, the pay going to current management, especially considering how many people at that March meeting were talking about leaving. I'm glad that we're going to honor people. I think we should also honor the current management who went to the, the classroom. That's two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Our next two speakers are Lourdes and Catherine. Good evening. So uh, I am here on a bunch of different roles. I was actually a student at PV at um, uh, the Pajaro District from K to 12. I actually came back and became a teacher. Actually, at Renaissance was one of the schools um, for 10 years, and now I'm a parent. And in that time, I can say that um, you know uh, Dr. Rodriguez has been one of the best um, uh, superintendents that we've had. We don't agree with everything all the time, but overall, I think she's done a wonderful job. Um, I think that, and one of the things that I really appreciate about her is having the bilingual program be more than what it was. When I was a student, we didn't really have one. It was really non-existent. And so I really appreciate that because it shows that it values um, kids that come with, um, with another language. Because it's really sad that so many kids lose that language. But on top of that, I've also seen a lot of the principals really go above and beyond. I'm a parent at Rolling Hills. And honestly, I didn't want my kids to go there because that school had such a horrible reputation. But the principal there, um, you know, Dr. Alcaraz and now um, Ms. Munoz have done an amazing job. And I really think that if we want to keep quality people, we need to, we need to appreciate them with pay. We, it, can't, it can't just be like, we appreciate you and that's it. You know, one of the reasons I left teaching is because I couldn't afford to live here with that pay. I, I switched careers for that reason. 
So I think if, if you really want to keep the quality people that we currently have, we need to give everybody a raise. It can't just be these people, because you're gonna have a bunch of people leave. As already, as already has been stated, substitutes have been a huge problem. It's burdening teachers, teachers are deciding to leave, and that's not good. So we really need to address this issue, and we really need to appreciate people monetarily, not just with words. Thank you. Good evening to all of you. Um, I'm Catherine Griffin. I am the most junior member of the Personnel Commission. I want to express my appreciation to all of you for all of the hard work that I know that you do and for this opportunity to address you. This particular action item has three parts to it. I wholeheartedly support the first two portions. As a new member on the Personnel Commission, I would like to respectfully request that you send that third portion back to the Personnel Commission for further review. I think we have time for that since Allison expressed that those things will not be implemented until next year. I think there are other positions on that salary schedule that also need some review. And unfortunately, it was a very rushed process. And I abstained from voting. A couple of my colleagues approved it because they felt as if they should we would like to do a better job of what we did if you would give, the, give us that opportunity, okay? Thank you very much for your time. Do we have any discussion from the board? I, I would just like to say, you know, thank you to the principal, Mr. Moran, and Minnie White and his staff, uh, Dengarberto and Blanca Madrid at EA Hall, I'm the principal who's done a lot of work to make sure that we, we do our best to make sure the children are safe. And I stand 110% behind the staff at Watsonville High School, and so I'd like to make the motion that we support this agenda item. Trustee Costa, did you? Your mic slide, did you have? It, yes, thank you. Um, I just, I have, um, I ag agree with um, Trustee Dodge Jr. Um, and his comments. I full heartedly as well agree um, with the, um, both paragraph one and paragraph two for supporting the raise for our uh, classified and certificated management employees for the 2021, 2022, and 2022, 2023 school year, I do have a concern when a member of another constituency comes forward and expresses a concern about something within that item. And I mean, just as a city and official myself, I, I would have that if any one of us up here sat up here and had a concern about something, or if we were also uh, dealing with another, um, you know, mis municipality, agency. And so I do find that concerning. I, myself personally, I felt that the third paragraph really should have been a standalone item of its own and on the agenda anyhow. Um, so I don't know if Trustee Dodge supports that and, and sending it back to the Personnel Commission for further review and bringing it back at a future board meeting as its own agenda item per whatever the recommendation is after they've had an opportunity to uh, meet the request for further review and if he wants to amend that motion, um, I would be happy to support that, but I don't know where he's at with that. Or maybe we can have further discussion. Mm -hmm. um, sure. I have a comment. Yes. So I, <coughs> I, I believe the Personnel Commission did vote 
They did, and they approved. And they approved. Correct. Right. They approved the recommendation. Mm -hmm. So why would we send a decision back? Is, I, I, we don't really have precedence for that. They approved this decision. Correct. And the other two commissioners are? Casey O'Brien, which is the board appointed trust um, commissioner, and then, um, oh, her name is escaping me, but she Monique. is, Monique, thank you, sorry, sorry, Monique, I'm sorry. Yeah, she's the joint appointee. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, so no, 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 sorry. And as, as you had, as you had explained mm -hmm. in your presentation, mm -hmm. so those positions, it was, mm -hmm. or kind of, you had realigned them because of the redistribution, because of we had reduced management. Mm -hmm. One of them was the, because of the cabinet positions that we had eliminated, and then there were other. Correct, and if you would like me to review them again, Please. I absolutely can, yes. So the first one being the reduction of the assistant superintendent of secondary, which I know is now Lisa, but we really eliminated the um, ed services, and so that right. work has pretty much stayed with Lisa. Casey's taken on some of it, and then all the other work especially around the student safety piece and all of the Alice trainings and whatnot has fallen to our risk and safety manager, Ruth. Um, and so that is why that recommendation was brought forward is because she's had increased higher level duties due to that reduction. Um, the other one, as mentioned, is in maintenance and operations. So we've kind of gone back and forth um, where the position has been a director of M&O and then there was a, a director of facilities. So that's all the planning. And then when we eliminated that position, her Lindo's position was not brought back up to the director level position. It was in prior to separating them out into two positions. So that is realigning that and placing that back in that position. With the elimination of the administrative services director, um, so that was Clint's former position before he was a CBO, all of the retros that we're doing because of all of the um, TAs and agreements we've had with our bargaining, unit, bargaining units, all of that work and that higher level work has gone to our payroll manager and it didn't live there before, it lived at a director level work, the director level. So when you say retro, explain what you mean. Yeah, so when all the TAs that you just approved for PVFT and the ones you approved prior to CSCA, you'll re they are effective July 1 of 2021 for CSCA. The one for PVFT that was just approved is retro to July 1 of 2022. So what that means is then Lauren and her team have to go back and re-report all of those things. They have to go re-add the salary schedules as if you had approved it in July. And so all of that work and looking at all of the line items, they have to go and do that retro and it's, it's, it's an insurmountable amount of work. As well as looking at and doing all of the salary schedules. So those 37 salary schedules, all the ones for CSCA, that work all lived under Clint and Lauren has now taken on that work. Um, and I'll, trust me when I tell you, that is very complicated work. Um, and not just anyone can sit in there and kind of build a salary schedule. So, so that's that one. Um, there is also the behaviorists, so that's another classification. Um, they have gone more outside of just special services and they are supporting gen ed students and the district in a little bit larger capacity. Um, so that is why that one is there. Um, the, Executive, executive Director of the Fiscal Services, as the board knows, that has been a very challenging position to fill. It's been vacant, f it's not vacant, sorry, Colleen. Sorry, Colleen, you're not, you're still here. Sorry, Colleen. But she announced her retirement about six months ago, and so we've been trying to fill it, and it's been taking an absorbent amount of time um, and hard to recruit someone to the district to take on that role because it is a very intensive um, position. Thank goodness we've finally found someone, but that is as well as that one. So. And then there's the Director of Human Resources uh, Classified. And so that is also to do some alignment. So as I've, I think as I discussed in the item to begin with, we have realigned certificated management positions in the past. We have brought different salary schedules forward to realign coordinators at the district, um, expanded learning. And so and we sometimes do them with classified. So we don't always have funds to do them all at once and fix everything all at once. And so we do it in phases. And so there is some more work that we would like to do in the future on the certificated side. And so s the stuff that you saw tonight in terms of the classified management is another phase of realignment for the work that's being done. And so that's why it's in this item at this time. So do you expect that there will be additional revisiting in the future? Yes. Okay. I'd like to second uh, Trustee Dodge's uh, motion. Any 
further comment? Trustee Scott? Yeah, thank you everybody who spoke. Um, and thank you to all of our, our administrators, um, whether they're here in the district office or on, on the campuses. Um, from what I've been learning, um, I've been on the board now just over two months and it's felt like two years. And it's been a very uh, eye-opening and uh, very valuable. And I'm really truly impressed with everybody's dedication. I can tell it's been a pretty hard year for a lot of people, uh, both administrative and teachers and our classified workers, um, you know, our lowest paid workers who are also the glue and, and, and hold our schools together. And obviously I wanna be advocating for them later on this year uh, so that we can st start paying living wages there. Uh, but it's been a tough year. Um, as I said, when we voted to table this item, it's my opinion and still my opinion that our district should pay classified teachers and administrative competitive wages um, up top to bottom and um, and that I would like to see more and more of our budget go into salaries. So certainly I'll be supporting that tonight. Um, I've been heartened and impressed by the direction I think of our, of our board and the conversation that's been happening in our community. I think it's moving in a good direction and, um, and I just wanna thank everybody for their work. Thank you. I also just wanna say thank you to all uh, management and um, classified and certificated. Um, we do very much value uh, what you do for our district and um, I also, I know we already have a first and a second, but just because I was contacted by two members of the Personnel Commission. How many members are on the Personnel Commission? Three. Three. So two have reached out to have this sent back. So, and the reasoning that we heard today and in my email was because they felt rushed. So I know we already have a first and second, so I'm not sure what that means as far as, you know, anything. I'm, I want this race to go through, so that will happen. But um, maybe going forward, we can items like this, maybe have them be a standalone item so that we can have more of a discussion about it and you know, be able to, to dive a little bit deeper. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'm going to um, just want to say, I'll, I'd reiterate what Trustee Flores said. Um, when I first saw that, that was my first inclination even before I was reached out to um, about this matter. Um, again, by the same two, so Three, two, that's the majority right there, right? If there's three members and we were reached out by two with concerns, I mean the majority of the voting members of the Personnel Commission have concern. So I'm disheartened that um, you know, some of my other colleagues don't um, take head, heed to that. Um, you know, that, that is important. Um, but again, so I would say again, that really should have just been a standalone item and I wouldn't want to see this again happen like this because the four and a half and the ten percent are really their own items that right belonged there, and this realignment of these six um, positions, I really see should have been a standalone item. Okay, so but with that, I'm gonna at this point because we do have a first and a second, and I don't want to see the pay raises fail. I'm gonna have to support it, but we'll definitely be much more diligent about that going forward. And we can send things back to the personnel commission. We're not here just to be a rubber stamp. I mean, part of our job is to question things, especially when people bring those things to our attention, right? Not just to be a rubber stamp. So thank you. All right. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. .8, approve total compensation for cabinet employees for the 2021-2022 and 2022-2023 school years. Report will be presented by Allison Niazawa. Yep, still me. Thank you, President Home, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. So before you tonight is a total compensation for our cabinet members, um, and it is for the 22-23, sorry, I keep going backwards, 21-22 and 22-23 uh, school years um, with a 4.5% for 21-22 and a 10% for 22-23.
Um, a couple things I would like to, to point out um, that I also didn't point out on the last item, but it's the same for this one, is that both items, when they were presented on March 8th, also were inclusive of current management employees, so that isn't a change. That was always our intention, to only give it to current management employees. Um, but something I would just like to point out, because there was some um, items and points brought in to the attention of the board at our last two meetings discussing this item. And so one of them is that, I'd like to clarify that there was never an 11 and a half or 11.8% increase presented for the assistant superintendent um, salary line. Um, when the salary schedule was squared, because we have squared management salary schedules and a squared cabinet salary schedule, the formula inside the assistant superintendent line was broken. So when the 4.5% was applied to the first cell and drawn out, it caused a 5.6% increase to step seven. That was never the intention, as we can see by the item, and if you go back to the one on March 8th, the intention was to do 4.5%. So therefore, it would have been caught when the COE audited our salary schedule along with what item we brought. So I just wanted to point um, that out. The superintendent and CBO's salary schedule on this item was done correctly, and there was no broken squared salary schedule in there. Um, and so as this schedule presented in front of you tonight, it has been squared correctly, and in order to give a 4.5% with the proper squaring, what it actually does is make step 7 only a 4.1%. So um, I just wanted to highlight that because it was brought up, so I wanted to clarify that piece, and I respectfully request that you approve the salary schedules for our cabinet members. Do we have any public speakers on this one? None. <laughs> um. <laughs> I will call them in order of three, and uh, please, if I mispronounce your name, correct me. Um, our first three, Bill Beecher, Amy Thomas, and Dr. Jackie Medina. Good evening again. Uh, you may have figured out I'm a strong proponent for this uh, management team. Um, I think uh, at Hewlett Packard, we use four ways of measuring performance, planning, organizing, leading, and control. Uh, performance is also how did the kids do academically I talked about that earlier outstanding but there are other things that happened we had to shut down Valencia school a couple of years ago during the previous rains that was done so seamlessly no one knew it really happened then we have COVID-19 there was this transition to online learning and our performance academic performance did not drop which was atypical of school districts across this country and in the state. And that was because of the planning and leading from the staff and working with the teachers, they were able to seamlessly step in and be able to teach online. I don't think there's other districts that can say they did that. We've had recent problems with the floods here. Um, again, you know, Pajaro Middle School things were hap happened instantaneously done well under control those are marks of superior management and at HP we rewarded that that's what we need to reward here if you don't reward it you're basically telling this staff we don't value what you do and much like sports teams which several of the trustees know about uh, if you did this to uh, the Warriors or to uh, the 49er staff, they'd all leave. That's true here. You've got an outstanding staff, you need to reward them. And they're not, you know, what's proposed is not huge. I think it's understated, but reward these guys. They're good. Hello again. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez, President Home and the Board of Trustees. I think you know who I am by now, but Amy Thomas, for those of you that don't. Um, I'm going to be very quick. I stand in solidarity with our cabinet. Uh, the political divisiveness should not be a factor in your decision tonight. Their accolades, commitment and dedication to PVUSD, their incredible drive to achieve success and growth for our students, and many, many more attributes should be your deciding factor. We need to heal, and the only way that we're gonna achieve this is to support one another. 
Dividing management is not the right choice. It will only create a reason for our committed and fearless leaders to find other opportunities that will pay them what they are worth. Please support our management team as a whole. We're worth it. Good evening, President Holm, Board Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Dr. Medina Starlight's principal. Tonight, I'd like to remind us of some of the accomplishments we've seen in the last seven years under the leadership and vision of our superintendent. PV High School's athletic field, our career and technical education pathways, the Latino Film Project, our new wellness center, the amazing network of community partners we've developed, the culinary garden and teaching kitchen, <laughs> which is a nationally recognized program, the revitalization of dual language programs in our schools, the nine hour school day, passport weekends, distance learning and PVUSD was learning, it wasn't review packets like many other um, districts in our state, the membership of the League of Innovative Schools, community engagement initiative, support for our flood ev um, evacuees and the list goes on and on. This is not normal or ordinary. The layers of impact on our community are huge, and these actions are unique and special to our leadership. Don't forget what happened when the school board tried to dismiss our superintendent while she was grieving with her family. If you remember, the entire community came together and supported her. We stand with her and our very hardworking cabinet. I ask you to please stop the divisiveness it hurts our schools, it hurts our families, it hurts our students. It's time for healing, unity, and making progress towards building a stronger district. We need quality leaders, and fair compensation is one way to recruit and retain them. You saw the facts presented last meeting. It's very clear, this decision should be very clear and straightforward. Again, it's time for healing and making progress. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Brooke Hofkins, uh, Maricela Rocha, and Heather Gorman. Good evening. I'm President Home Board of Directors and Dr. Rodriguez. My name is Brooke Hofkins. I've been an administrator in this district for 14 years. And I'm speaking to, to you tonight to voice my concern about the movement to divide our cabinet members from management as we're, we're talking about salary increases. This separation is destabilizing to our organization and it greatly devalues these integral positions and incredible amount of responsibility that comes with them. In the past seven years, there's been an incredible transformation in PBUSD. Our educational community has faced many challenges, including a global pandemic, which we continue to feel the effects of in many ways. In response to this, teachers, faculty, and management all together we completely redesigned learning and we transformed our schools into places that serve the whole child and the whole community. No longer are we solely focused on academics, but we're a, we're a place of service to our families. We provide everything, meals, physical and mental health services, enrichment, expanded learning opportunities, and a growing list of community partnerships. This coordination of services takes an, inc an incredible amount of vision, innovative planning, and leadership to implement and to hold all of us accountable. It truly takes a village, but it would not be possible without the people sitting right here. Being the superintendent or a cabinet member is not a job, it's a way of life. These positions require being available and on call all hours of the day, and they are. They're respons responsive every hour of the day. Um, to us as district and site leaders with any situation that may arise anytime, and it does. Anything that can happen <laughs> has happened. So please don't give them a reason to leave the district for better pay and stop the momentum we have going. Their positions and their contributions are valuable to our district and to our students. Give them an incentive to stay in our community and continue the good work on behalf of our families. Good evening, Dr. Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. My name is Manisela Rocha on behalf of Fitness for Life. I'm here today to urge you to approve today's agenda item. 
We are very grateful for the opportunity to work with PBUSD. Fitness for Life has been a partner of PBUSD for the past two decades. We provide services to thousands of students year yearly thanks to the commitment that Dr. Rodriguez and the cabinet have to support the whole child, whole family, whole community. Our programs are valued and students are succeeding because of the focus of the whole child. We urge you to value this team that values our community. Thank you. Good evening. President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees. I can't say it better than what Dr. Medina just said, um, but I do really encourage you to please, um, or urge you to approve the total compensation for the cabinet for the 21, 22, and 22, 23 school year. These are brilliant people here. I'm concerned again for the well being of our district. Recent board decisions could create a destabilizing effect in the district. When I said those words on March 30th, I was not speaking about compensation just for me. I was speaking for the larger picture, for all staff, including our cabinet. Just as a reminder, when Trustee De Serpa spoke out about the advanced degrees and increased responsibilities cabinet has and that they should not be separated, she received a standing ovation. She spoke of how Dr. Rodriguez and the cabinet has raised the bar for children, and again, we stood and applauded those sentiments. I'm here today to say that we need to pass this, and we need to, again, heal our district and bring people together. Thank you. Our next three speakers, Jen Littleton Bruno, Isabella, and Dan Weiser. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. I'm Jen Littleton Bruno. As you know, I'm the director of Expanded Learning and I'm a mother of four PBOSD students. I'm new as a director. In nine months ago, I was in an interview and I asked Cabinet, will you stand behind me? And I looked at Dr. Rodriguez and she looked at me and she said, I have a vision and of course, this is what we are doing for our students. I looked at every one of Cabinet and they each looked at me with such determination. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't have asked this. <laughs> I shouldn't, what am I doing? And it was because I knew what it would take for our programs to succeed, for our students to have a chance to succeed. And I wanted to make sure that I was gonna be a part of a team that wanted it as much as I did. And I just have to say, you guys applaud me all the time about our PARO passport program, our breakfast club, our expanded learning, our summer school. It's not just me. I go to Clint all the time, all the time. I think I can do this, Clint. Does this look good? How are we doing on our budget? And then I steal his candy. Allison has, <laughs> Allison has been beside my side, helping me do structural changes so that we can implement a program for our students that they deserve. Casey is helping me ensure that we have literacy in Beable in all of our after school programs and before school programs. Lisa is always able to text me and guide me and ensure that our programs are doing what we need to do. And as a new administrator, if I have any question, I know I can text Lisa at any time of the day and she will get back to me and ensure that I am doing the right thing. I cannot urge you enough to pass this. If this does not pass, I can't do my job without this support. Please pass this to me. Good evening. Um, well, I will just emphasize what everybody else said before. 
because in addition to the expertise and dedication to the cabinet, what I have experienced with El Sistema during COVID-19, the pandemic, what the ca this cabinet has been able to do was not seen anywhere else. It's a big district. It's 17,000 students. And from one day to another, everything was shut down. Did the cabinet go anywhere? No, they came together. Not only did they come together, they brought the whole community together in order to make a plan for the students. That plan helped the whole community go through this very difficult time. I didn't see that anything anywhere else, and I will really urge you to consider the quality of the people you have here. And they deserve a raise. They do their job, and they really believe in what they are doing. It's a rare thing, and I think we should value that. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez, and Cabinet. Uh, my name is Dan Weiser. I'm the Director of Technology Services. Um, I've been working for PVSD for 28 years. Uh, I started as a bilingual teacher in this district and then started teaching technology classes and wound up here. Um, through all that time, I've been 18 years working here for, for, uh, at the district office working for technology services. Um, and our, our incredible tech team does the impossible every day. I mean, no, we always say no one knows what happens on the other side of the wire, and it's, and it's true. It takes, it takes a lot of uh, specialized skill and knowledge and a lot of hard work to make that happen. Um, we have one of the largest networks on the Central Coast. We support thousands of computers, mobile devices, applications, accounts, passwords, databases, servers, uh, security systems, and on and on. And technology is constantly changing. Um, so um, it has become a, a critical part of every child's education, every employee's job, not to mention the need to generate data to guide all the decisions that, that we're making every day. And um, through the years, I've worked with and worked for many cabinet members. Uh, one of the main reasons we have such a, a robust technology infrastructure and working devices for all staff and students is because of the support and leadership of our cabinet members. Things have changed so drastically in the last seven years in terms of technology, curriculum, and education. And I have a unique perspective because I've been a part of it for so many years. And it's the leadership and vision of this cabinet and the superintendent, and we need to keep them here. If they leave, it's gonna start moving back backwards, and we need to keep moving forwards. So I urge you to approve this item. Our next three, Lisa Sandoval, Brian Saxton, and Dr. Nancy Bilicic. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, and Cabinet. My name is Lisa Sandoval, and I'm the Director of the Child Development Department. I'm here to encourage you to recognize the hard work that our cabinet puts in by approving their total compensation. I have had the honor of working with this cabinet in my current role and last role. I've really learned in the last few years these positions are 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Just as many of my nights, family celebrations, vacations, etc., are interrupted by emergencies, I can only presume based on our district size that theirs is tenfold or more. Based on my experience, I have had cabinet members reach out to support our program, students and families, even when they are on vacation, rather it be locally or out of the country. I can also say with confidence that they are here for our students first and foremost, even if that includes having tough conversations or making unpopular decisions. Oftentimes, these positions are the toughest and receive the most criticism. It is hard to be the center of such unrest and false pretense at times. But Dr. Rodriguez and Cabinet still model integrity and leadership. This is the first time as a parent 
and an employee, I have seen such a dedication to bring innovative programs and increase diverse opportunities for our kids and families by our superintendent. As we hear with other organizations, we have a hard time recruiting based on our salary schedules. Well, the same would be for these positions. Any one of them could move to another district and make more, even in non-cabinet positions. But they are dedicated. As with our amazing teachers, our fabulous classified staff, and our awesome administrators behind me, you know they are truly 100% dedicated to our children, families, and district, and we should strive to keep them and be equitable with the increases. Thank you. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees. Uh, my name is Brian Saxon. I'm Director of HR. Uh, nice to see you again. So um, I just want to say, as I stated in my last comment, that management is an in integral part of PVUSD and cabinet is an integral part of management. We are all collectively one body. Uh, it's been my privilege to be in the district for the last 21 years, and I've worked with a lot of cabinet members. Um, and I don't think you would find uh, a more um, collective cabinet work harder or be more focused on a daily basis to um, improve what's happening in our district. Uh, it's amazing what Jennifer Littleton Bruno said, just about all the individual things they do, uh, being available at all times, um, mentoring us. Um, every time I walk into Allison's office, I learn something new about HR um, that I didn't know existed. So, um, and Clint's there to answer, and Casey and Lisa and Dr. Rodriguez, uh, they're so actively involved. As a site principal for 12 years, um, I didn't see the superintendent very much. It was just a different deal back then. Uh, in, I think I was with uh, Bradley for four or five years when Dr. Rodriguez came. I think I saw her more and Casey more in those four or five years than my previous uh, 10 years as a, as a site admin. So um, they just are moving us forward. I would encourage you to um, approve their salary increase as proposed. Thank you. Well, good evening, President Holm, trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Nancy Bilicic. I'm the uh, director of adult education. I tell you, I've changed roles so many times, I sometimes forget what I'm doing. But I've been in this district, um, well, well over 35 years. And in education, probably close to 50. And I've watched a lot of things. But tonight, I want to be in that celebratory mood. <laughs> we had the teachers. You helped management, and now it's time for the cabinet. Cabinet is part of our team. Cost of living has gone up for everybody. And the Warriors won tonight. <laughs> so we have to celebrate. All of us have to celebrate. That's how I see tonight. I see it as a big celebration. And I hope that you, as trustees, I know you work hard too. And it's hard making decisions, and which ones, and the right ones. But this is important, and Cabinet, our superintendent, they're part of the team. So I hope that you consider their compensation. Thanks. Our next three speakers are Rich, Ruth, and Peggy. Good evening again. Um, Rich Ariano, Director of Purchasing. Um, I have the pleasure of working with all of our cabinet from time to time, mostly with our CBO Clint and with Dr. Rodriguez. And um, I just want to say how much of a difference it makes to be a, you know, a middle manager for what we do as directors than to know that I have somebody that always has my back with whatever battles I need to fight or whatever questions I may have about, you know, how is this going to look for our whole district. A lot of the things we do are, are district-wide initiatives and just wanting to make sure that um, we're on the right path, the messaging is right, that we're not leaving anyone out, that we've addressed every single angle that we can. Um, it makes a difference, right? Like the, um, it, 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 it just does. Like having somebody 
to be able to call uh, or text and, and get an answer back when, when you needed it, it makes a huge difference. Um, so for me, when I, when I get lost and I, I can't think of how I wanna address things, I always think back to being a parent or being a coach in sports. Um, so for me, playing football in, in college, I got the opportunity to play for somebody that was a professional football player, right? He was no lineman, Coach McIntyre, who played with the 49ers, won a bunch of Super Bowls, did all that stuff, right? When I met Dr. Rodriguez, that's what she reminded me of, having, having like a, a, a pro, like somebody that, um, you know, you had to soak up everything that she gave you because, you know, you, you only got a couple of minutes of her time, and it only happened, you know, maybe once a week. We, we got to share, you know, ideas and, and thoughts and projects. I've been on the both sides getting the pats on the back or, you know, getting her getting after me to do something differently that I need to do different, but it's, it always has the same effect. So the thing I'll say is, um, don't take this the wrong way. You, you're foolish if you think that she can't go somewhere else and do it for somebody else, right? And get paid more and, and, you know, the loyalty goes both ways and that's the thing that I'm, you know, the most thankful for. Please approve the reasons. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. Again, I'm Ruth Boogie. I'm the Risk and Safety Manager for the District. And I'm also a direct report to our CBO, Clint Rucker. And I'm just here to express my gratitude for him tonight. And I've seen the dedication he devotes every day to his job. And he has an open door policy. There's never a time I can't go into his office and ask him a question. Um, so it would be a tremendous loss to this district if we saw him go. And I know that came really close last time when you were voting on his contract. And that was a very scary time. So please vote yes on this and please support because voting no is not just a monetary figure that you're voting on. It's really showing them that you respect them and they're a part of this school community. So thank you. Good evening, Dr. President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. I'm Peggy Pugh, I'm the Executive Director for Teaching and Learning. Um, at the March 30th board meeting, as well as earlier this evening, I spoke on behalf of, uh, of equity of those increases across all the bargaining units and all employees, including administration and our cabinet and superintendent. I wrote something else, but I really wanna speak to that idea of breaking apart our leadership team. This is a very important team with a tremendous group of leaders who lay out a vision for us like no other. I've been in the district for 26 years and each of those years I worked my tail off regardless of what position I was in because that's my work ethic. This is the first time in my career in the time that Dr. Rodriguez has been here and with this, these cabinet members that I feel like I'm like, I gotta keep up. And that to me says something because I have always set for myself way far off goals and ideals, and I'm constantly reassessing that based on the work that I see from our cabinet. I don't want them in a separate group. I want to be within one leadership team together. We've always been one leadership team. I don't understand a divisive decision to separate them out. They are the visionaries of our district, and we stand with them. So please make a good decision tonight. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Herlindo, Saulo, and Sergio. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, board members, cabinet, my name is Erlindo Fernandez. I'm the Director of Maintenance and Operations. I've been working here for the school district for about 30 years plus. Um, in those 30 years, we had a lot of emergencies and stuff like that. I was a CSA member. Those 30 years that I work here, I've never seen a superintendent, cabinet member, help out in any emergencies. This year when we had the emergencies, the floods, Dr. Rodriguez, Clint, Allison, Casey and Lisa were out there helping us sandbag the school district. 
So they got, they're got actually out there to support us and help us with any, everything that was going on. During this last storm when power flooded, if it wasn't for the superintendent, Clint and all the cabinet, were th for their quick thinking of getting power over to Lakeview, um, who knows how long it would have took to get the school up and running. But thanks to them, we got the school up and running in a few days, and I'm proud to work alongside of them, and I could always count on them. Work with Clint, he's great. Anytime I have a question, he's there to help. So I encourage the board members here to please approve the approve the the race for the cabinet members. Thank you. Hello, Holmes and uh, Dr. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez um, and Board of Trustees. So today I'm here um, to be and pretty much thank Clint and our cabinet, Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. It's been some rough um, years and they've been being able to stay here and dedicate their time to the school district. COVID, <coughs> floods, everything that happens, they're still here standing. And I want to thank them today for everything that they do. And I remember uh, when we were in the floods, they were here, like Harlindo, um, my director said, we were here 10 at night, one in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning. We worked as a team. They always supported everything that we do. As well in facilities, I've never seen so many projects come to the table and it's thank to them. I've never seen anyone work so closely with the city and the county to get, to get new fields and to do a difference as they are doing today. So I, I really want you guys to think about the decision you make today because it's gonna make a big impact and honestly, we don't wanna lose any more members and a great team that we have like today. So thank you, appreciate it. Good evening again, um, President Holmes, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees. Um, like I said before, I think we all work. We all work hard here. We all play for the same team. Uh, we got a call the night that the district shut down because of the storm. We got a call to relocate our yard. They told us all the vehicles are going to go to Lakeview. So we get there, and Clint was there. He was driving like. Like us. So I go there and tell him, Clint, I got this. You can leave. He told me, if you're here, I'm here. That meant a lot to me. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Andrea Willie, Julie Edwards, and Judith Camacho, and Don Burgett. Thank you, good evening again, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, PDUSD colleagues, and our community. I'm Andrea Carlos Willie, Impact and Resource Development Officer. As you are hearing this evening, Dr. Michelle Rodriguez and Cabinet, Lisa Aguevia, Casey Clappenbach, Allison Mizawa, and Clint Rucker, model for our collective leadership team, and we are a team, deep integrity, depth of experience and knowledge, and an unwavering commitment to excellence in education for our students. Through hard work and long hours, they are facilitating the co-creation of a PVUSD that reflects the boundless potential of our students in this community and enacting this mission statement that belongs to this board as well. This is not the PVUSD of seven years ago. This leadership team has overseen the implementation of transparency within our budget and financial statements that is, a clear and that is clear and accurate and affirmed constantly by numerous auditors and our county office of education. Under this team, the execution of school district operations and support for programs that serve the whole child, whole family, and whole community are a strength and an asset for our community, our Pajaro Valley community, and there's great pride in that. Up work to uplift and center the voices of our students, staff, families, and community in our priorities is paralleled in few, di few districts, and all of those voices 
are your constituents or future constituents. These efforts are being widely acclaimed and recognized in forums and convenings within local, county, regional, and state arenas. I urge you to rise above partisan politics and without any qualification, give our superintendent and our cabinet the raises that you have already budget, have been budgeted for and that are so well deserved. This will demonstrate to all your commitment to PVUSD. Thank you. Good evening, um, Board President Holm, trustees and superintendent, Dr. Rodriguez. I'm Julie Edwards, coordinator of career technical education for PVUSD, and on March 30th, I shared some of the most significant improvements and accomplishments we've made since 2019 when we assumed leadership of our CTE program. Every aspect of those accomplishments and the progress we've made is a direct result of the unmatched belief, vision, and commitment to our students' future success led and modeled every single day by Dr. Rodriguez and her dedicated cabinet members, Lisa Agaria, Casey Klappenbach, Allison Nizawa, and Clint Rucker. It's important for me for you to know that Dr. Rodriguez and her cabinet ask and listen to learn the aspirations of our students, families, and community, and they use what they learn to activate all of us together to realize the outcomes that we collectively want for our students. Abundant lives, gratifying careers with a living wage, contributing and celebrating a flourishing Pajaro Valley. I am personally grateful to Dr. Rodriguez and Cabinet as leaders of the meaningful work we humbly engage in together. I ask each of you without hesitation to act responsibly and approve the total compensation for Dr. Rodriguez and Cabinet employees for the 21-22 and 22-23 school years. Thank you. President Holmes, trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, you have a leadership team. Support your leadership team. Thanks to Lisa, Casey, Allison, Clint, Dr. Rodriguez, you have the opportunity to make a difference in this community. You are making a difference. And we at Life Lab are deeply, deeply grateful for your leadership. And we want to share with you that thanks to the leadership that you have, and specifically I want to acknowledge Dr. Rodriguez, Dr. Rodriguez um, has championed not only music for children, but also school garden, connection with the earth, connection with their bodies, connection to the earth. This is what is going to be needed right now and for the future, and that's what we're preparing children for. We have also, thanks to incredible partnerships and leadership, been able to successfully, successfully uh, achieve the Starlight Culinary Garden and Teaching Kitchen. Dr. Rodriguez has invited you all, and you're all welcome to join us on May 3rd, next Wednesday, to celebrate what you have all been able to and with this incredible leadership. This is an example, as um, Andrea Willi was saying, regionally, uh, statewide, and nationally, you are on the map because of your leadership. Keep supporting them and have the race be approved. Yes, and I'll, <laughs> and I'll just add with any remaining time that when we talk with people all across the country about uh, what we're doing here and the model programs that are happening here, the first thing I tell them is, I don't know if you can do it because this is an incredibly special community and an incredibly special district. And part of that is not only the support and partnership all up and down and across the district that we hear about um, within district employees, but I say, I think it would be enough, it would be more than enough of a job to just manage the core public functions of a district, but this leadership team invites in community partnership in a way that is synergistic and that results in hugely more resources coming to the district, to its students, to its staff, and to the community, so thank you. Thank you. And point, point of order, it is uh, almost 10.10, and we have several more speakers and quite a few more action items. I would like to make a motion to extend the board meeting till 12.30. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Our next three speakers are 
Veronica, Chrissy, and Nancy. Put my glasses on. Good evening, Dr. Um, Holmes, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. My name is Veronica Moran, and I'm the Executive Assistant to Clint Rucker, our Chief Business Officer. I'm sure some of you um, board members have seen the agenda and are anticipating a long night. Um, and some of you have not, which is typical. Yes, this is going to be a long night, and these five cabinet members are the first to arrive and the last to leave at every board meeting, but I can't say the same for many of you. On March 8th, this board was so close to not renewing our chief business officer's contract. My boss, many of you thought, let's not renew his contract and get someone else to replace him. Again, making a rash decision, not knowing the consequences if you voted no. Thank God it was brought to your guys' attention. By voting no, this position would not have gone away. Again, making decisions, not knowing the repercussions of your negative vote. We would have lost the best CBO PVUSD has ever had. Also, where would that leave me? A classified worker that you guys say you support and care about. My position also would have been affected. I ask you as a board, do your research, ask the questions, and have discussions with these five cabinet members. Um, I'm very active in the community, and I get it. I hear the noise. By the noise, I say the bitching, the complaining, anything, everything and anything. But your job as a board member is to listen and hear their complaints and address those tough questions with the uh, board member. By you just agreeing with other concerns because you know them or because they voted for you, it's wrong. Your job is to understand the whole picture and some of the board members don't grasp the whole picture. Some of you join this board with vengeance, hate towards staff. How does this help our students, staff members, community? With you not approving cabinet raises, you are basically stating to our students, our staff members, don't hire your education, don't work hard, don't persevere, don't better yourself, Thank you. don't, well, don't bring your family up. Uh, because if you move up the chain, Thank you. if you move up the chain, you are not worthy. That's what you're saying. Uh, good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees. My name is Chrissy McLean. I'm the coordinator of counseling programs. And um, you've heard a lot this evening about the momentum of PVUSD and I, um, you know, I don't think I have to outline all the things for us all to know um, the very different PVUSD before Dr. Rodriguez and after. Um, so um, we've, you've heard from many partners, you've heard from administration, you can, you, you know, um, Bill Bleacher outlined some things very clearly. PVUSD is better and it keeps getting better. I, um, when I came, you know, I was a teacher in the classroom and I love being in the classroom because I live in possibility and every time I see a student, I just think all oh, the possibilities. That's how um, I know Dr. Rodriguez sees every student in PVUSD and all of us. And as I've moved from site administration to district administration, I've seen the capacity in us grow. That's not by accident. Dr. Rodriguez, this is not by accident. She sees the possibility. She keeps the high expectations. She's building the growth for this team that has been there no matter what, any time of the hour. All these people could tell you, these folks don't get a day off. And it's not by accident that PVUSD is better. And to not approve this is like cutting us off on the knees and ruining that momentum. So not only is this a time to heal, this is a time to just show us that you want us to keep getting better. Let this team keep growing and keep helping us grow so that we can give all that possibility to all those students. Because PVUSD is better and getting better and better. So let that continue, please. Thank you.
Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees. My name is Nancy Zuniga. I'm the Assistant Principal with the Expanded Learning Department. I want to use this time to thank Dr. Rodriguez and to thank Cabinet for all you do for our students and our staff. A lot of what you do goes unseen and unrecognized. I want you to know that I see you. The long hours you spend working diligently, all the drives you do to visit sites and support, the work you do that is being done. I see your passion you have for student achievement and student success. I see your dedication. President Holm and Board of Trustees, I hope you see it too. And please support this action item. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Yasmin, Kristen, and Bonnie. Hello, good evening. My name is Yasmin Herrera, and I'm a program director at the Digital Nest. Um, the Digital Nest is a uh, career development center for 14 to 24 year olds here in Watsonville. And we've had the privilege in our short amount of time of eight years to work with PVUSD on many projects. Um, and I want to say that successful school districts like PVUSD invest in their staff whether they are direct instructors or administrators. Administrators and all leaders are essential to a healthy work environment and provide the support teachers need. In the last couple of years, that support has come from the entire community. And this district, led by Dr. Rodriguez and her cabinet, is successfully partner, partnering with community-based organizations like the Digital Nest um, to provide even more resources to students. I'm currently also the board member and president of the Watsonville Film Festival, and we are proud to also partner with the district. And um, I have a story. Um, our, our executive director uh, contacted Dr. Rodriguez very last minute because a, uh, a famous actor came to, to the community and he came early and wanted to speak to students and inspire them and he's very a very captivating speaker and dr rodriguez made it happen last minute and he was able to go to six different schools and inspire over 200 students and it was it was just a a really special moment that you know it's it just shows how much Dr. Rodriguez cares about the big picture, but also the the small magical moments that could happen, you know. And I'm really proud to be just one of the many community partners. And thank you. Hello, my name is Kristen Brubaker, and I'm the deputy director of the UC Santa Cruz Educational Partnership. I'm here with my colleague, Shelly Horn, who is the director of our EAOP in Access programs. We are here on behalf of the Educational Partnerships Center to read a letter of support, which Shelly has, um, for Dr. Michelle Rodriguez and the cabinet. The Educational Partnership Center has been serving PVUSD through its EAOP and MESA programs for over 30 years, and it has had the chance to partner with the district on other programs throughout, such as Gear Up. Through our long partnership with PF PVUSD, we've had the privilege of working closely with Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. Over the years, Dr. Rodriguez has earned our respect, and we greatly appreciate and value her leadership. She's been an exceptional leader who is passionate about her work and who has always had the best interests of all students at the core of all of the decisions that she's made. The cabinet furthers this work and the vision for the district. It is often because of these individuals that we're able to successfully partner with school counselors and teachers to build innovative programming customized for each school community to support their students' academic preparation for high school and college. These programs have allowed us to provide individual advising to get students back on track for graduation in A through G completion, celebrate student successes with events that honor future choices, and provide fun and engaging college week activities. Dr. Rodriguez and her leadership team's goals are aligned with the Educational Partnership Center in preparing students for success in their lives post high school graduation. 
We wish to emphasize that we hold an enduring commitment to PVUSD in continuing our work with the district and Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you for your time. Good evening. I'm Bonnie Gutierrez. I'm a community member and I represent the Maya Foundation Board. Um, the Maya Foundation has been collaborating with the school district since 1979. I also worked in the school district from 1985 to 2005 in a management position. Today I re reviewed the district and board goals. Goal number one, the board shall engage and sustain the trust and involvement and responsibility of all parents and community to promote collaborative programs. Goal number two, the board shall develop and retain an excellent staff throughout the district. In my observation of the last three board meetings, the board created and supported the devaluation of the work and worth of both management and the cabinet with the entire salary raises issue. In this district, teaching staff would flounder without management, and the cabinet and superintendent carry out you, the board's, vision. Since 1985, I have not seen a more focused, prepared, engaged, transparent, and dedicated superintendent than Dr. Rodriguez. And she has chosen the cabinet members wisely. As we move out of COVID, the floods, the staff shortage, and the crisis brought on by three current board of trustees in the last few years, it would be wise to keep cabinet and management together on the salary and raises issue. Keep the district united and move forward for the benefit of students, parents, and community. Thank you very much. Our next three speakers are Lauren, Doran, and Stephanie. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. I've had a lot of thoughts and feelings on tonight's meeting, and I wasn't sure what I could say tonight that you haven't already heard. It's disappointing to see that we've yet again created another divide among the district that is supposed to be one team. I'm a voting constituent of Area 6. Mr. Scow, you were appointed into this position to do what's best for our district and best for our staff and our students. You have countless times uh, said that Every employee deserves a raise, while all employees include the five cabinet members that sit alongside you every board meeting. <laughs> if you choose again tonight to vote down another raise, you are going against your word. Please do what's right by us as staff that work for these amazing cabinet members and give them the well-deserved raise that everyone else in this district has received. Also, please note, these people cannot stand up for themselves and speak on their behalf, so please listen clearly to what we have all said on behalf of our managers that we report to. I've had the pr privilege of working with Clint when he was at the COE. He is an amazing, amazing employee. You should be lucky to have someone like him. Dr. Rodriguez is an amazing superintendent. Dorma, who is she? This woman has brought this district up and you should be thanking her and not sitting here and t not giving them a raise based on what? five people coming up here and telling you they don't deserve it? We are the people that report to them. We support them. They support us. Support them back. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Cabinet, everybody in the house, hello. Uh, my name is Daron Comachero, it's Daron like phone, and I'm part of Food What. Um, thank you for, yeah, thank you for a few minutes to speak. You know, I, I wrote a speech and really what I'm feeling is um, I'm reading 
this list and all these words of all these resolutions and it's about compensation for this and compensation for that and really beneath that all I guess what I'm feeling is that this is about our young people and that's why I would assume everybody in this room in whatever seat you're in is here and that's really moving and my experience with working with PVUSD is that everybody has been needed in our partnerships, just like every nonprofit that I've heard speak, everybody at every level has been needed and everybody has been such an incredible vision and valuable partner to our work. And I wanna thank you all. And I really hope that tonight isn't really, even though it is about the people that we're voting for compensation, that really what we're voting for are for the young people in our community. And if we could keep them in our heart and in our mind, I think we could come to a really strong vote tonight and just have the triple win and then go, I'll go party with Dr. Nancy. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, uh, Board President Home, Trustees and Superintendent Dr. Rodriguez. Once again, I'm Stephanie Monroe, the coordinator of Gate and VAPA. And I'm very proud of the progress our district has made to expand the arts because we know that students who go to schools with strong arts programs are, have higher engagement in all subject areas, higher rates of attendance, and better mental health outcomes. Our district was recently named a best community in music education for the second time in a row by the National Association of Music Merchants. We are nationally recognized. The progress to expand programs over the past several years would not have happened were it not for the dedication, creativity, and commitment to student promise and success by our superintendent, Dr. Rodriguez, and cabinet members, Lisa Garia, Casey Klappenbach, Allison Nizawa, and Clint Rucker. And of course, this is just one of hundreds of examples of their impact. I'm deeply grateful to this team for their support of our schools and to me personally as an administrator. I ask that the total compensation for school years 21-22 and 22-23 be approved for the cabinet members. Thank you. Our next two speakers are Alicia and Angelica. Good evening, President Holm, Superintendent Rodriguez, board members and cabinet members. First of all, I want to say Lisa, Casey, Allison, Clint, and Dr. Rodriguez. It is an honor to work with you every single day to support 18,000 students. If this is about our students, you have to know we are doing better than ever. If this is about budget, you have to know if, you, if these people go where they are paid more, valued more, you will not pay less for anyone who replaces them. No one is gonna come at a lower salary, no one. If you go and speak to other districts, everyone has the Me Too clause. When every other member of the employee, every other employee receives a raise, administration and cabinet always get it after. I appreciate Dr. Rodriguez because even though she qualifies for a raise, Every single one time when you evaluate her, she will not take it. Months after she was hired here, she was pursued from her pre prior district for close to $300,000. It's not about the money for her. It shouldn't be about the money for you. It should be about what is happening, and what is happening is that our students are thriving. Our staff, is thriving. We are held to a much higher standard now than ever before. Why? Because leadership is modeling behavior that we have not seen before. This is the first time in my 22 years at the district office that I have to speak in public. Normally I'm a little coward when it comes to speaking up for myself, but when it comes up to speaking, about the benefits to our community, our students. I have no problem. And I am Lisa, proud sorry, to say two I will stand for you anytime. Do the right thing. Thank you.
Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, and dear cabinet. My name is Angelica Renteria, Director of Migrant and Season Head Start. At the March 30th Special Board Meeting, you all had the opportunity to hear from 79, I, I believe 79, of the district administrators about the work we all do and how proud we are of the work we do. I felt it was a very informative, yet an extremely emotional meeting, but I went home feeling proud of my colleagues and for what took place in that room that night. At the same meeting, you also had the opportunity to hear from Dr. Rodriguez on her presentation that included data on the range of salaries and benefits of key positions in other districts. And you also, the differences reflected on those charts. In addition, in many and on many repeated occasions, you have also had the opportunity to hear about the wonderful initiatives and programs and the growth in academic, in academic achievement that takes place here with our students from pre-K to 12th grade. I don't know if I've ever shared with you, but I've been working for this district for more than 35 years. And through those many years, I've seen cabinet members and superintendents come and go. And as Mr. Beecher shared earlier tonight, under Dr. Rodriguez's leadership and the current cabinet and within the past seven years, we have all witnessed the incredible progress and the academic, academic growth and learning of our students, with no doubt. And yes, it is teamwork, and teamwork is crucial. The work of classified employees, certificated teachers and administrators, as we all contribute to the success, and we are all part of this puzzle. But let's not forget that in navigation, the That's captain is who steers the wheel to the success. So I hope tonight, because I don't have Thank you, more like time, two minutes. you approve this item. Thank you. Is that it for you? All right, do we have any discussion from the board? I thought it was interesting as I was driving in, I listened to NPR and Marketplace, and as I'm pulling into the parking lot, they're, they're talking about the crisis in superintendent, and superintendent. 30% of superintendents have been leaving. <coughs> Not surprising. They were talking about a program in Maryland where they're uh, training, you know, trying to get the pipeline going for you know superintendents, and one of the, the biggest issues that, you know, trying to get people prepared for being superintendents is dealing with difficult and challenging board members. And um, duly noted NPR. <laughs> that, was that was where I had to turn off the car and actually come into the meeting. So I'm like, well, okay, fine. But the work that you all do and, and the, the balancing act that you all have to play in balancing the needs of the people who answer to you and you know Dr. Rodriguez in answering to the seven of us is, I can imagine there are some challenges um, balancing the needs of what you will want to accomplish what all of you want to accomplish with this district within the constraints of you know California Ed Code, with the federal and state budgets, with the conflicting guidelines, needs, priorities of our very of all of our various constituencies, is incredibly difficult, and I think that the progress that I've seen, you know, as a as a parent who has children who have gone through PVSD and as a child who is still in, you know, a PVSD student. It's like, I am incredibly grateful at the progress that I've seen. And I very much want to see that continue. So thank you for the work 
that has been done. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? And I've been on this board, this is going on my third year, and it seems like um, pay is always the theme of most meetings. And, uh, you know, and it's the point has been brought up that every level has had their increase. And, um, you know, we're always talking about equity and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it's at every level. You know, the percentages are the same. The numbers are obviously different. But the work that everybody puts in at every level to keep this place running is what counts. You know, there was a lot of good uh, quotes or, or phrases of teamwork. And, you know, I, I was part of this district for a while, and I was part of that team. And I was doing what Serge and those guys are doing, you know, weekends and, and nights as well. So I know the dedication and commitment those guys put in. Uh, you know, they kind of have a special place in my heart uh, because of, uh, I know what they do. Uh, you know, during uh, some of the disaster, Dr. Rodriguez would, you know, contact me, keep keep me in touch, you know, at all hours, and whenever something was going on, she'd update me. Um, you know, and, and and it's true, they're they're always diligent, they're always vigilant. You know, they're contacting OES or this agency and that agency. So. Uh, yeah, it, Thank you guys for the work that you guys do, and uh, you know I've I've been part of this district you know probably ten years now, off and on, um, and I've seen the difference because I was here when Dorma was here, and there was a different vibe back then. You know, there was a little I mean there was a little bit of detachment there, and uh, things were kind of easy going, and when, when Dr. Rodriguez came on, you know that all changed, and you know. And now, now we are where we are now because of that. So, thanks. Yeah, well, I'll, all right. Well, that being said, I'll make a motion to support this agenda item. Um, I'd like to second that motion. And I think <laughs> with some comments, of course. I think um, Oscar said it really beautifully that um, our previous administration, our previous superintendent, she's a nice person, um, but hadn't worked anywhere else, I don't think. Um, and we had three suicides at Aptos High that one year and she never once stepped on on the campus to support the students uh, or the faculty or the staff who work there I think that says everything and that's when I knew she had to go um, we had a long long process of interviewing um, superintendents and um, Dr. Rodriguez came ultra pre prepared she knew the data of the districts of the kids she set out a vision and um, and she has proved to be an excellent superintendent, and we are lucky and fortunate to have her here. So, <laughs> there's a new level of accountability here in our district over the last seven years, um, and that accountability is uncomfortable for many people who wanted who want status quo and wanted to remain the same and and um, a lot of people have left the district because um, they cannot work under the circumstances of um, high expectations and um, I say good riddance to them to the cabinet members um, Lisa was here before dr. Rodriguez came um, to Casey who essentially came with dr. Rodriguez to Allison, who has been mentored into her position. Th there you are, sorry. You're over here, I'm like, there you are, <laughs> here you are. You've been mentored into your position and you're doing a great job and we're so grateful that you continue to choose PVOSD, all of you. And to Clint, um, who's an excellent CBO and we are, again, very fortunate to have uh, everybody here and thank you for 
thank you for your, your grace and your graciousness, honestly, with your staff. I mean, it's unbelievable that people come up to their direct report supervisors and say how much they care and appreciate them. I mean, you don't, you don't get that everywhere. So anyway, thank you to everybody, and I hope this um, item gets passed tonight. Thank you. First and the second, do I have any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Did, I didn't, I, so, so motion, I, I didn't, so I didn't catch. Can we do a roll call? Can, do, can we do a roll call? I didn't hear everybody's votes. Oh yeah. Trustee Soto, your vote? Aye. Trustee Flores, your vote? Am I all done? Yeah, they're done. Oh, okay. Trustee Scow, your vote? Aye. Trustee Dodge, your vote? No. Trustee DeSerpa, your vote? Aye. Trustee Acosta, your vote? Aye. President Holm, your vote? Aye. Motion carries 6-1. Uh, people yeah enjoy we got stuff to do here. Yeah. Uh, all right item 9.9 .9, approve memorandum of understanding between uh, PVSD and PVFT with resolution 222357 to commit funds for a specific purpose Allison, yeah it's still me still you. <laughs> um, so yes thank you president home board of trustees dr. Rodriguez so as I mentioned in the previous item of the teachers wait let's wait till the next game um, so as I mentioned in the previous item of the TAs with uh, PBFT, this is an MOU. Um, so I actually really uh, appreciate the creativity of PBFT. This was their idea on how to utilize one-time money instead of just doing it in a lump sum. This actually benefits their members in a different way. So just giving one-time money, um, it does impact their retirement, but doing it in the form of days and the optional work days in this fashion actually increases and, and um offers them a different utilization in their retirement. So we were definitely all on board for supporting this and working with them um, to come up with this creative solution to, to days as well as some of the one-time money. So what you have before you is an MOU that would add an optional workday for this school year, four optional workdays for the following school year, and four additional optional workdays for the, the third year out. Um, and they are similar to the MOUs we've agreed to with our um, kinder um, full day kinder pilots and so that's kind of where this idea came from as well so there's the MOU as well as the resolution to commit the funds in order to pay it in the out years so um, I respectfully request that the board approves the MOU and the resolution to commit the funds thank you do we have any public speakers to this item yes we have one Roddy Good evening again, um, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, I'll keep this really short. I know you guys have listened to a lot of comments. Um, so I just, I wanna appreciate the district in, in working with us on this. Um, as Allison said, we were trying to find some creative ways to provide um, uses of that one-time money for our membership. Um, and as we heard in the resolution of um, earlier tonight about, uh, you know, National Day of the Teacher. Teachers do go above and beyond for their students um, every day, all day, and this uh, allows them to utilize, a, as they choose, extra work days to prepare their classrooms to be those learning communities that our students deserve. So 
um, thank you, and I hope you approve this item. Thank you. Any discussion from the board? Great. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, motion carries 601. All right. Um, item 9.10, approve memorandum of understanding between PVF T and PVSD signing bonus for classroom teachers at impacted sites, school nurses, SLPs, and psychologists. Yes, thank you, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. So again, I have two MOUs for you in collaboration with PVFT. Um, we have had some heavily impacted sites with regards to vacancies in the last couple of years, so that is what this MOU is there to address. Um, Watsonville High, PV High, Rolling Hills, EA Hall, and Lakeview. Um, so I, I do really appreciate um, the collaboration with PVFT to put this forward. It's going to be effective May 1st through July 31st um, to help fill some of our much needed positions. It's a $5,000 signing bonus for these school sites. And then in addition to that, if there's a BCLAD authorization, and it's also in addition to the signing bonus that is already in the contract of $2,500 for math, science, and special ed. So again, our math, science, and special ed positions at those five named schools could get up to a $7,500 signing bonus then everyone else's classroom positions would be 5,000. So that's that piece. And then for nurses, SLPs, and psychologists, um, a $5,000 signing bonus, because those are also some of our hard to fill positions um, as well. So I respectfully request that you approve both MOUs tonight. Do we have any public speakers to that item? Yes, we do. We have one. Roddy? Just bring you up here with me. <laughs> Um, good evening again. Yes, um, just to echo some of what Allison said, and I know you have all heard it um, this entire year of those hard hit sites and how that those vacancies impact the workload of, of the teachers there. Um, so we were really thankful to work with the district on providing the signing bonus for those specific secondary sites. That's been the biggest challenge this school year. And then as we all know, and as we supported a resolution for mental health and for school nurse day, those um, not only are we facing teaching shortages, but those are extreme shortage positions in our district, and they also, those positions, provide mental health services for our students. So we're very happy to um, provide a bonus and hopefully attract some of those people. Thank you. Do we have any discussion from the board? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Uh, very good idea. I'm happy this we're doing this. Um, we've had some vacancies there at these schools for a while, so I would just to anybody watching our meeting, we want it. We need teachers in our to come to PV, PVUSD wherever you are. We it's a community effort, uh, and so let's please uh, do all, if we can all pull together and do our best to fill these positions. And thank you for including this. Uh, I'm just wondering how we'll be publicizing this to get the word out. Yeah, so um, Brian and his team, right, they have a meeting tomorrow with all of our analysts, so we will be changing our job postings immediately so that they will reflect these signing bonuses. Um, we have a recruitment fair scheduled for May 6th. Um, we had one already, and we're going to have another one because it was very um, – it helped us a lot. We filled about six positions just from that. Um, our HR specialists are actively recruiting through flyers. We're going to look at bringing on Indeed. We're going to look at some other avenues to bring in um, applicants just in, aside from EdJoin. So we're really going to try to put our fingers out a little bit further. Um, they've been working with CSUMB, Cabrillo, getting on job boards, posting it kind of anywhere and everywhere, social media, and really trying to flood. We put a couple flyers out through Peach Jar which is our um, flyering system through the district to try to get parents and stuff for some of our hard-to-fill positions. So um, we're really trying to re rethink our, our recruitment efforts to get it out to the people that we want to have bring to it. Come you to know, I'll just say one thing. People, because I constantly recruit people, too, mm -hmm. into the district, and um, pe people are always asking me, can they bring their years, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know what the answer is to that. I yep. always send them to you to discuss. Yeah, we can verify. And in the, in the collective bargaining agreement with PVFT, we accept that the 17 years of teaching experience mm -hmm. or for like our nurses, psychologists, industry experience, and depending on if it's a CTE teacher or whatnot, we, we can look at kind of what their work and industry experience that would match that or be similar to teaching. So they'd come in at a higher step. Correct. Exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that regardless of what state they're in? 
it doesn't matter or is it just California? No, teaching experience is teaching experience as long as it's for a full year. So we, you need to have worked like a full year in order to get a full year of credit. But no, we honor teaching experience regardless of the state it's in. So I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, any opposed? Motion carries seven uh, zero. Math. All right. Um, <sighs> it's still me. Nine. Uh, Last one. Yes. So memorandum of understanding between PVSD and CSA Chapter One Thirty Two Transportation School Bus Driver Trainee Signing Bonus. Yes, thank you, President Holm, Board of Trustees. Dr. Rodriguez is my last uh, item for the night, so you'll get rid of me after this one. Um, so we worked with CSCA as well as the Director of Transportation. I know it's also been um, a request of the board and also to look at our signing bonus for bus drivers, and so that's what we did because we were seeing that after we have trained our bus driver trainees and paid for the training, they were not sticking around, and so we're trying to incentivize them for that. So what we are continuing with is the $5,000 signing bonus for anyone that comes to us already certified because we can put them right in a bus and they can get right to work. And so we want to value that experience. Um, but what we've expanded it to is a $2,500 signing bonus to our trainees. And that will be paid out over two years. So we're trying to do how we build our other signing bonuses. We pay them over, over time so that there's a little bit of an incentive to stay. So this is something new. Um, that we are bringing forward with regards to the trainees. So although we pay for the program, we're also wanting to give them a signing bonus to incentivize them to stay with the district once we've trained them. So I respectfully request that you approve this MOU as well. Any public speakers to this item? We do not have any public speakers to this item. Any discussion from the board? I would like to say that um, about time. Um, I'm absolutely in full support of this. This is great. And so I am, with that, going to make a motion to approve it. Second. I have a first and a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Bye. Bye. <laughs> all right. So um, item 9.12, adopt declaration of need for fully qualified teachers report will be presented by Brian Saxton, our Director of Human Resources. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees. I am Brian Saxton, Director of Human Resources for Certificated. Uh, and so yearly, the district must bring as an action item uh, the annual declaration of need. This declaration, if approved, allows the district to employ a variety of means to help reduce teacher shortage uh, by allowing us to provide for internship programs, waivers, and emergency credentialing. Uh, these um, emergency credentials, interns, and waivers are authorized by the Commission on Teacher Credentialing. And by approving this declaration of need allows us to process these so that in our areas of need, such as bilingual education, special ed, math, science, um, and others, as if needed, we can um, use these particular types of permits and internships. So I do request that you would approve this declaration of need for the upcoming school year. Thank you. Any public speakers to this item? We do not. Any discussion from the board? Make a motion to approve. We have, a, we have a motion and I heard a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0 and with that we're halfway through our action items. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so item 9.13, CSUMB PVSD Speech Language Pathologist Collaboration Report will be presented by Heather Gorman, our SELPA Director of Special Services. I'll do it again, sorry. <laughs> Good evening again. I'm excited to bring forward this wonderful opportunity to collaborate with our local CSUMB to help us to decrease the number of SLP vacancies in our district. For the last 13 years since I've worked as an administrator in special services, we've not been fully staffed with our SLP positions. Several years back, we increased the pay for SLPs and this helped but there's still an overall shortage of students that are going into the profession. And this is why this opportunity is so exciting. So we would partner with CSUMB to build a teaching program for speech pathologists. It would be a two-year rigorous program with oversight by a licensed SLP professor and CSUMB staff. 
the students would obtain 400 direct service hours and they would do that at one of our school sites, meeting the services and needs of students with IEPs. Prior to the placement with us, they will have essential coursework completed. About 40% of the students in this program are local to our area and many of them are bilingual. So, so when they are ready to be hired, they will be living here, know the cost of living, what it takes to be a member of this community and have bilingual skills and many other, um, have bilingual skills which many of our students need. The speech students in the program will provide services indicated in a student's IEP. They would be able to work on the following, artic on the following articulation, voice, fluency, building language skills, liter literacy skills, social pragmatics, executive functioning. Students will assist in IEP assessments and of course the licensed professor and SLP will oversee all the services, assessments, and IEPs. This program would be one of, um, this program would be at one of our sites and would provide services to all students at that site. The program would support in building our SLP workforce and potentially help us completely fill our SLP vacancies with PVUSD personnel. Any public speakers to this item? We do not. Any discussion from the board? This is awesome. This is a wonderful, wonderful partnership and idea. And it's a way that we can pipeline new grads right into our school district. So congratulations on bringing this forward. I'll make a motion to approve. Yeah, first, do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm gonna abstain. Motion carries um, six. Zero one. Yeah, zero. thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, appreciate um, Item 9.14, Williams 2022-2023, quarter three report. Uh, January, February, March report. Oh, it's your back. I forgot about this one, so I'm so focused on the other ones. <laughs> Here I am. You You're missed back. me. I know, I'm back. All right. Uh, thank you, President Home Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. This is the Williams Quarterly Report um, brought to you. So we, you will see that we did have a, a Williams complaint um, in the third quarter. It was from um, Watsonville High School. It was regards to the HVAC in the art wing. Um, and once the complaint came to my office, I um, contacted MNO and Herlindo responded very swiftly. They fixed, there was a coupler. Um, that was not circulating the heat properly, so it was all going into one room and not circulating to the three rooms properly. So they fixed that as well as um, checked just the circulation of the air and everything so it's working properly. So um, although we got the complaint, which was great because we knew about the issue and it also was dealt with quickly. So that's the only piece we have to report is that there was a complaint at Watsonville High that has been rectified. So I request that you please approve the Williams report. Thank you. Any public speakers? We have none. Any discussion from the board? Uh, Trustee Badge Jr. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you, Erlindo. You know, I, I know we've had some issues with the pool and the air conditioning and, and you know the heating and everything, but uh, I know when I bring up the issue right away, you guys deal with it, so I just wanted to say thank you, and I'd like to make a motion to pass this agenda item. Thank you. I'll second that. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Item 9.15, grades 6 through 8, Mathematics Instructional Materials Adoption. A report will be presented by Terry Redfern, our Director of Mathematics. Good evening. Good evening, President Holm, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Dr. Rodriguez, Cabinet, and our PVUSD community. So we began this work in order to promote highly effective first instruction and to do that with the lens of integrity. So like all of the textbook adoptions, we have a well-established process and it's mirrored across all the disciplines. And this is kind of our timeline of what we did. We began at the very beginning of the year. We talked with all of the teachers about what we were gonna be doing. 
We then did some screening, both papered and digital. Then we got together and we selected which of those texts that met our qualifications that we would actually pilot. And then ultimately the committee came together for the final decision. So the paper screening process. There's a group out there called Ed Reports, and they evaluate curriculum across the country, and they look at those that meet uh, a lot of the high leverage criteria. So using that, we only selected uh, curriculum that met those criteria in all of the areas. And so from that, there were four curriculum that came out. It was iReady, uh, Desmos, Mid-School Math, and CPM. And these criteria came from a well-established um, toolkit called the Mathematics Curriculum Evaluation Toolkit. When we did that, when we got together in the paper screening, every single sixth through eighth grade teacher had the opportunity to look at those materials, and we all filled out a Google form, and we tabulated the results. But we selected seven criteria that were more important than all of the others. Supports for students who are non-native speakers. Supports for students with learning needs. Universal access. Learning objectives that were closely aligned to the standards. And collaborative activities were embedded throughout the text. And was there embedded student-centered academic discourse and, more importantly, critical thinking? And were there real-world applications that were contextualized the learning so that students can then apply it to their own lives? And finally, were we getting those just-in-time interventions so that students were getting the help in the moment, weren't having to experience the frustration? And later you'll see how well this lines up with our LCAP goals. So the process itself, after we did that screening, two curriculum bubbled to the top, iReady and Desmos. And when we looked at that, um, we noticed that iReady was very comprehensive. It had every one of the tools that we were looking for. And Desmos is a very attractive platform. It's very interactive. There are a lot of simulations. By doing this, we went through a five-week process for each of the curriculum. So it started by a full day of training. Now, the people who did this, the eight teachers who volunteered, were from all grade levels, and we even had a a uh, teacher who represented an SDC class, which is a self-contained class for our students with learning needs, all grades six through eight. So we had some of our best teachers looking at that. They got coaching on how to use it, and they went out and implemented it for five weeks. After they did that with both curriculums, we came back together, and we talked about it with the publishers and got fuller, further feedback. Then ultimately, we came together for a day. And on that day, we went back and we looked at how did these curriculums meet those seven prioritized requirements? What were the strengths and weaknesses? And more importantly, we were looking at things from the lens of the students. What were their needs? How were they met or not met? And then we looked at student feedback. We had them give us some feedback. Where do you learn best? And so based on this analysis, the group unanimously chose to recommend the iReady curriculum for grades six through eight instructional material adoption beginning this coming August. What were the strengths of iReady? Well, iReady had many strengths. Important for us was multicultural bilingual resources. The supports for differentiation and scaffolding, the universal access, are built into the daily lesson plans. They're not something else that the teacher has to do. And there is a key emphasis on student protocol for discussion. They call it the try, discuss, connect. I try a problem, I discuss it with you, I connect it to other mathematics or relevant topics. It focused on the eight mathematical practices were a key part of the Common Core State Standards. And there was a huge emphasis on student engagement and thinking. They're going to carry the load. And there was strong technology integration. So from that, we made our final decision to choose iReady. And quickly here, it lined up with a lot of our LCAP goals. If you look at goal one, it met 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, 1.7, 1.18, 1.19. .1 it aligned with goal four, that we're going to have board-approved instructional curriculum. Goal five, 
A to G course alignment. That helped decrease the number of long-term English learners because we know that for a lot of our students, they have the math skills and it's the language that gets in the way for them to be able to demonstrate those skills. And this curriculum addressed that. And finally, they have, uh, in fact, the proposals, they're going to come and do family math nights with our parents. So getting the parents engaged in their students' math curriculum. So it's no longer this black box of what is my student doing at school and how are they learning it. I get to understand all that. So with that, I'd like to um, bring the teacher recommendation forward to this board that we approve the iReady math curriculum as the district-wide math adoption beginning in August of 2023. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers? Any discussion from the board? I just have a quick comment. Um, as a mom to um, foster kids and my own too, I, and this is a complete disclosure, an embarrassing disclosure, I stopped being able to help them with their math at around sixth grade, not kidding, because some of the word problems were so difficult that like I just, I, I couldn't. So how is this curriculum for parents? like for parents to be at home helping their own children? There's several ways that the parents can interact. First of all is um, at the beginning of every unit, there is a, a summary of what the students are going to be doing in that unit uh, that can be sent out as part of the family um, engagement. Additionally, the students have online access to the curriculum that they can share with their parents. So a teacher could kind of say, these are our upcoming units. You can take a look at it. And finally, they have family math activities that the parents can do the math with the student that's kind of going along with what they're doing. So there are family math activities as well as the communication tools. Are they currently using Desmos right now? So currently, our adopted curriculum is Big Ideas. Desmos is a, um, they have a multi-level product. They have a free platform where you can kind of pick and choose and use uh, some of their um, interactive, um, oh, it's hard to say, lessons, that, you know, but it's not really a curriculum. And then they have uh, the curriculum, which we piloted, that uh, has those along with some direct instruction. So yes, but our main curriculum right now is Big Ideas, and Desmos, if being used, is used as a supplemental uh, tool. Because I know I've helped my son with this. So. Yeah, it can be homework sometimes, uh, and they are uh, student exploration, so. Yeah. Did you want to add? So just quickly, I was at Lakeview um, yesterday, and the teacher was one of the pilot teachers, and she is continuing to use that for the remainder of this school year. So that could also be what is happening if, if one of the teachers is a pilot teacher. I know she really liked Desmo. She, she agreed with iReady that that was the better, but um, she is going to continue to use Desmos, and the children were using it in the classroom when I was there yesterday. Yeah, like like Trustee DeSerpa, you know, I, I, well, I, seem, I tend to think I am good at math, but I still struggle when I see this new way of teaching. And the one thing that I did like about Desmos is I can go on and I can watch, I can watch it like, okay, teach me. So then it teaches me, so then I could teach my son. So I, did, I do like that for that one. I'm hoping I already has something similar for parents because we all learned a different kind of math. Yeah, definitely. There's a big focus on it in iReady, and um, you know there is one result, but there are many pathways to the result. And so the solution means there are multiple solutions to get there. And so they do emphasize uh, demonstrating multiple ways so people can understand it coming from different perspectives. I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion, uh, a motion to pass this. A second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Well, thank you very much on behalf of our students. Thank you. All right. Our next item is um, approve one year contract. So this is item 9.16. Approve one year contract with Brigade. Report will be presented by Jeannie Aitken, our Director of Food and Nutrition Services. Hello. Good evening. Dr. Holm, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, board. 
of Trustees. Um, yes, I'm super excited to uh, ask for approval to hire a chef from a company called Brigade. They work specifically with schools, only with schools. They're trained professional chefs. Um, we're just super excited about this opportunity. We received about $750,000 in kit funds last year, which is uh, specifically for kitchen infrastructure and training of our staff. So we would use those funds to pay for this chef um, who could, will hopefully um, not only build on the existing skill set of our current staff, um, we're hoping that this chef can also um, move us forward in the direction of implementing more scratch and semi-scratch cooking. So I respectfully request that you approve this agenda item. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Any discussion from the board? Yes, Trustee Dodge Jr. You talk about schools. What schools are you talking about? Um, what what our intent is um, actually we would have this chef focus mainly on elementary schools, all the elementary schools, um, just because of the way our infrastructure is set up and the fact that we do a lot of satellite cooking. Um, that's where the potential lies Can you tell for, us for most improvements. Schools? All elementary schools. The, the, the chef will be based at Central Kitchen um, because that's where all of our meals get packed out of and that's when we do cook, that's where we cook. So the and Central Kitchen meaning is at the... Um, here, it's here at the district office. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I love that um, we're doing more cooking from scratch. I've been asking for this for like even before I was on the board, it's one of the first times I ever addressed the board before I became a board member. I asked for scratch cooking, and this is super exciting. So I'll happy, be happy to make a motion to approve. And I just wanted to add, you know, it is, it is a way to ensure that we're, you know, we're meeting the needs of our community in a healthy and, you know, sustainable and mindful way. And it's just, it's, it's great. Well, I'll second. Because, yay. So, first and second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Item 9.17, approval of Calabasas Watershed Mural. Report will be presented by Casey Klappenbach, Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Educations. All right. Good evening. Um, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. Um, I'm Casey Klambeck, Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education, and I am here. It is a pleasure to present on behalf of Mr. Todd Westfall and the Calabasas Cougars their um, proposal for a watershed mural project. And so their proposal started from their, their site green team who wanted to make sure that their parents and students were well informed and knew the impact that they had directly on the life of the watershed. And so this, um, they were able to find donations and contributions that will be paying for the mural from the Ocean Guardians grant, the Santa Cruz Arts Council, and the Green Schools. And so this is just a quick glimpse at our actual watershed. And it, the purpose was really to make sure that all of our students and families actually know where they are in the watershed and that who do we share it with who affects the health of our watershed and what can we do to make sure we're protecting it and so two of our um, of well-known community artists from the Santa Cruz Arts Council will be helping work with our students at Calabasas to actually um, develop and create the mural it's Nessa Ledesma and Irene Gustamante. And again, like I said, it, all of the materials will be paid for um, from those donations and grants. Um, Calabasas will continue to keep it up um, throughout the years. And it was approved unanimously by their parents and school site council in March. And so this kid gives you a quick glimpse of how it actually, how it's strategically intentionally placed um, or will be placed on their um, playground. So you can see that you have the, dr the drainage, the storm drain number one on the left side and two 
on the right side. And so the mural will actually wrap all the way around and will give you a glimpse of the section on the left by the um, storm drain number one. We'll include the wetlands. In the middle will be the connecting plants that, have, that are there. And then also the right side will focus on um, the Monterey Bay all right, so um, without further ado, um, we're requesting that you approve Calabasas's um, mural proposal. Great. Any public speakers to this item? Any discussion from the board? Go Art. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I just have a quick question. Who came up with the design? That's new, right? The logo? Um, usually they have students every year they actually design a new logo and so this is probably this isn't their newest one actually oh, I've never seen that but it's really nice okay so I will make sure I pass it on yeah, to the Cougars uh, uh, thank you Casey and uh, thank you to principal Westfall um, an excellent principal and Calabasas school school near and dear to my heart uh, this is very exciting also somebody who has a career in water policy uh, very, very exciting uh, and very important given recent events to learn about our watershed and the way we recharge groundwater and sometimes don't recharge groundwater and how the quality of the water is, is so uh, important to, to protect. So thank you. Very exciting. I'll make a motion. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you so much. All right, uh, item 9.18, approve notice of award for a landmark elementary school fence installation project. Report will be presented by Orlando Fernandez, Director of Maintenance Operations and Facilities. Good evening, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, board members, cabinet. My name is Orlando Fernandez and I'm the Director of Maintenance and Operation. And I'm here for the, with this first project to bring up the landmark elementary fencing project. This is to add fencing on the side of the NPR. We're gonna be adding, if you see the map, we're adding two gates and ornamental fencing on that side there. 44 linear feet of ornamental fencing. And this proposal came in at $21,556. And I'm asking for the board to approve the the amount for Oliveira fencing to continue with the project. And this is an endowment um, funded project. Thank you. Any public speakers? We have none. Any discussion from the board? I'll make a motion to approve. Great. We have a motion. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Um, item 9.19, approve award, notice of award for the Cesar Chavez um, Middle School Fence Installation Project. No, it is still you. Good evening once again, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, board members, cabinet. Um, for my second project here for approval is the Cesar Chavez Middle School Fencing Installation Project. This proposal came in at $52,943 with 30 cents. This is an endowment um, funded project. We're going to be putting fence over, as you can see in the yellow down at the bottom, at the, by the turnaround where the cars park, there's going to be a total of four gates and th 214 linear feet of ornamental fencing. And I'm asking the board to please approve the proposal for early bed fencing for $52,943. Any public speakers? We have none. Any discussion from the board? Sure. So they nailed both contracts with their proposals? They came in right in? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, not bad for a day's work, huh? Two yeah. contracts? Is that a motion? Yes, a motion to support. Sorry. Great. I have a first. Uh, I'll second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion carries 7 0. Um, item 9.20 approve um, EDIS Architects Agreement for the Buena Vista Child Care Facility New Modular Replacement Project 2023032. Good evening again, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, board members, cabinet. Um, for this project, um, I'm, I'm asking for the approval for to continue the project with ADIS Architects. This project is Fund 12. The, pro the project is estimated value at 750000 So for their services, I'm asking for your approval for $160,980 to continue with the contract for ADIS Architects to help us with the project. Any public speakers? We have none. Any discussion from the board? Trustee DeSerpa? Erlinda or maybe our CBO can explain to us what Fund 12 is. Absolutely. Fund 12 is child development. So that's um, migrant seasonal head start as well as early childhood education. So not general fund, but um, in this case it's Buena Vista. So that would be ECE. That would be under Lisa. So this money is not coming out of general fund. It's coming out of a different fund, Fund 12. Correct. And this is actually funding that um, Lisa has specifically for improvements to her facilities. So even in Fund 12, it's also restricted for these types of projects. That's great, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7 0. All right. Item 9.21 approve notice of award for the H.A. Hyde Elementary School Courtyard Modernization and MPR Siding Replacement Project 2023019. Good evening again, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, board members, cabinet. Um, for this project, we are, we, on February 3rd, 2023, and February 10th, the district advertised H.A. Hyde Elementary School Courtyard Modernization and NPR Siding Replacement Project. A mandatory bid work was held on February 14th, 2023, and six contracts were present at, at it. On March 28th, 2022, the district received three sealed bids for the from the following contractors. Attached are the bid results. Uh, coming in at the lowest bidder, C2 Builders for with a price of 395,000. I'm asking for the board approval for, to continue on with this project with C2 Builders for the amount of $395,000. Any public speakers to this item? We have none. Any discussion from the board? Sure. Uh, is C2 a local contractor or the out of the area? C2 Builders is out of Las Lomas. So here local. Las Lomas? They're local. Oh, they're yeah. Local guy. Okay, good. I have a question. Yeah. Um, when we were looking over the bids, are they like for like, were they bidding the exact same, you know, work? Because that's a huge discrepancy. I'm just wondering if Premier Builders, you know, foresaw other like change orders that might happen that maybe C2 didn't. So were they very like practically identical in what they were bidding? Correct. When we do a bid walk, everybody sees what every, you know, we there. That's why we do a bid walk. Everybody goes through it and everybody shows up and then, th and then they get to see the plans. So everybody bids accordingly to the plans. Gonna get any change orders after the fact. Oh, no, no, well, no, some no, I know, no, I know. I'm no, I'm no, no, <laughs> but no huge ones. Never know. What? Right, and and to that, you know, for those of us who've done this, right, and you as well, been on these walks. I mean, that's the opportunity to also ask questions. But just to be clear, I, I mean, we do see lots of change orders lots of the time and in that's a good time to ask questions about that and what's happening um, and we've seen them both ways you know where we've um, owed more and sometimes it's a significant amount 
And then we've also seen where we've had money come back. Erlinda, what, um, so in terms of like <coughs> just, you know, for our, our, our newer board members, you know, what is the, what, for change orders, like what is the limit for oh, change orders? Percentage. What's the percentage? Uh, it's up to 10% okay. of the, that of it, the, uh, of that the it has total to come cost. back to yeah. the board. Yeah. Correct. But Dr. Rodriguez, I think, mostly does bring pretty much, don't, I think you bring really all of them back. So all usually? change orders come yeah. back, yeah. but you technically are already pre-approving up to 10%. Right. Um, and so if it's over 10%, then there's additional approvals that you guys have to make. And so you might see some change orders. You won't get close to premier builders um, mm -hmm. number. Um, the only time that we saw major change orders, I would probably say, was PV High, mm -hmm. the field. Mm -hmm. And that was because there was just a lot of things underneath that we Correct. didn't know and couldn't see until then. And so that one, I don't think got over the 10% either, but it was close probably. <laughs> Well, it, we we have seen some that have been on sites, and because so many of our sites are so old, and we've had these issues, and especially when we're dealing with things like plumbing and piping, and some things just really do go unforeseen. And I know that many times, and even to your predecessors, myself as well as some of my other colleagues, have you know really pushed back on that to try to really vet that better. And it, it, I think I would say I've witnessed some improvement with that, so. Sorry, yeah, one more thing to take into consideration and just a little perspective, Trustee Flores, you know, you had a question in the discrepancy in the prices. Each one of those companies had different operating costs and overhead, so their, their prices are gonna be different because they have to pay rent and they might have other costs that they incur, whereas C2 builders might have a small yard or you know, who knows how they operate, but they're able to to put those prices out. I mean, you know as well, you have a functioning company as well. So just just a food for thought. Yeah, but I'd like to say I think that this is, is a very good question and observation. Yeah. And I, do we get a motion yet? Mm, not yet. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to support. Did you want to second it? <laughs> All right, we have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries 7-0. Uh, All you. right, um, item 9.22, approved notice of award for the Freedom Elementary Door Replacement and Room 31 Alterations Project, 2023-014. Good evening again, Doc, President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, board members, cabinet. Um, for this project is the I'm asking for the approval for the Freedom Elementary door replacement on April 7th the district advertised the Freedom Elementary door replacements in room 31 alteration a mandatory bid work was held on April 10th 2023 six contractors were present on April 20th 2023 the district received four sealed bids as you can see from the bid results C2 builders came in at the lowest again. So um, I'm asking the board approve the contract so we could move forward with a C2 builder for the amount of 240,600. This is an ESSER funded project. Great. Do we have any um, public speakers? We do not. Any discussion from the board? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a first. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. All right. Last one for your early. Oh. Item 9.23, approve. Huh? Oh. Approve uh, Edis Architects Agreement for the Starlight Elementary uh, School Shade Structure Project 2023-035. Take it away. Okay. Good evening. President Holm, Dr. Rodriguez, board members, cabinet. Um, this project is for Starlight Elementary School Shade Structure. This is in back where the um, new kitchen, Legacy, is at. And this uh, project is estimated at $50,000. And I'm asking for the approval uh, for the 
to continue with ADIS Architects agreement so they could design and help us out with the project. The to do total dollar amount for this project would be 12175 and like I said, this is a major L bond project. Any uh, public speakers? We have none. Any discussion from the board? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a first, do I have a second? I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Item 9.24, safe return to, to in-person instruction and continuity of service plan. Our report will be presented by Dr. Michelle Rodriguez, our superintendent of schools. Yes. Thank you so much. So as we have done the last year and a half, in order to continue to use ESSER funding, we have to every six months bring back the safe return to in-person instruction. So regardless of the fact that now there is no longer a state or federal state of emergency, we still are utilizing ESSER funding. And so because of that, we must approve this plan. So as it has been customary the last three times, um, the only updates are updating it so it now reflects um, current requirements from CDPH, which is the California Department of Public Health. If you look through it, there are two major changes. One is that um, technically people no longer have to test on day six and they can come back as long as they are asymptomatic. Previously, they had to wait until day 10 or they could test on day six um, and only if they had a negative um, antigen test could they come. Now CDPH has changed those requirements to now it is six days regardless unless you have symptoms. The second major change is that we have taken out Inspire Diagnostic Testing. So as previously, um, the entire county required a, C a PCR test in order to um, come back if you had symptoms. Um, now um, we have a line to CDPH requirements and now you no longer have to provide a PCR test but instead an antigen test which we do actually provide at all schools and departments. Um, we did remove Inspire diagnostic testing and that is because with the expiration of both state and federal um, state of emergency, Inspire diagnostic was now going to charge our community and charge our staff and that was not something that we wanted to engage with. Um, so we only allowed them to be on our campus and our district office if they were willing to do it free of charge. Um, and they are no longer in any county um, location at this point. So again, we are still providing for students and staff antigen tests um, for free. Um, and so we encourage anyone who is experiencing symptoms um, to get that from either their department or their school site. And so I ask for your approval so we can continue to use ESSER funding. I don't see any public speakers. All right. Any discussion uh, from the board? All right. Make a uh, motion to approve. I have a first. Do I have a second? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 601. All right, um, consent agenda. We're done with action items. All right, consent agenda. Um, those are our routine items that are brought before the board. Do we have any public speakers for consent agenda? Are there any items that the board wishes to defer? All right, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve our consent agenda tonight. Can I have a second? All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? All right. So did did you want to vote on consent? I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. Okay. I was over there waving. It, oh, sorry. On the other one, I don't know if you want to. So uh, for consent agenda seven zero. All right. So. All right, on action items, so let's see. Are there any items to report from closed session? Um, yes, there are. Yes, we have some items to report. Um, let me see. 
Okay, so um, on closed um, session item 2.2, um, I move to approve the Certificated Personnel Report as presented by District Administration on our April 26, 2023 with 44 and 10 additional action items. Right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'm sorry. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> okay, motion carries 7-0. Uh, on uh, closed session item 2.3, I move to approve the classified personnel report as presented by district administration on April 26, 2023 with 34 and nine additional action items. Second. All those, um, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. On closed session item 2.7, the board voted 6001 to adopt resolution number 22-2354. And we had already voted on that. So, um, but I do have also a few announcements. Um, so our first announcement, um, our, on behalf of our superintendent and the district administration, we are pleased to announce Ms. Jenny Imes appointment to direct, Director of Fiscal Service. Ms. Eim has over nine years of experience in finance with seven of those years in various roles in school finance. She started her career at the Santa Cruz County Office of Education and in recent years has been serving the Sonoma County Office of Education and the Petaluma City Schools. She has a strong background in the different functions of a school district such as accounting, payroll, budgeting, auditing, and school finance. Ms. Eim is described as an excellent team member Thorough, de thorough, detail-oriented, and brings new ideas to the work. Ms. Eim establishes and maintains great working relationships with everyone as she comes in contact with. She deals effectively with a wide variety of people and handles all situations with tact. She looks forward to moving back to Santa Cruz County and serving the district in her new role. We are proud to welcome Ms. Eim as our new Director of Fiscal Services. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the Power Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce the following. Please welcome Manjeet Desi, Lisa Diamond, Gretchen Goofrey, uh, Carl Jackard, and Georgia Tyrell to their new roles as program directors for expanded learning. Previously, these five administrators were coordinators of extended learning and are all moving into new roles with expanded learning. They bring a wealth of knowledge and experience surrounded ex surrounding expanded learning and will now be overseeing multiple sites and working with staff to continue the excellent programs that Expanded Learning provides to our students and community. We are excited to have this group of experienced educators in their new roles. Um, the announcement three, we have uh, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce Nanny Zuniga as, Nancy Zuniga, excuse me, as the new Assistant Director of Expanded Learning Nancy is moving into this position after um, serving as the assistant principal of extended learning for high schools. Nancy's new role will allow her to interact with students and staff from grades K through 12. Her in-depth experience as an expanded learning administrator will help her plan comprehensive programs, monitor budgets, and strengthen relationships between PVOSD and the community. We are excited to welcome Nancy to this new role. And our last announcement for the evening, uh, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce Aaron Meilenberg as the new assistant principal of Aptos High School. Aaron has been serving students since 2016 as a math and choir teacher and most recently as a teacher at the Virtual Academy. Aaron has also worked in Morocco with the U.S. Peace Corps. Aaron holds a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics from UC Davis, a teaching credential in math from CSUMB, and will complete his administrative credential in June of 2023 from CSUMB. He is also currently working on his master's in education. We are excited to welcome this highly experienced educator into his new role. Go Mariners. And that is all. All right. Well, our next regular board meeting will be on May 10th, 2023. And with that, our meeting is adjourned at 1139.